Okay, here we go. We started. <sighs> Welcome, people, to the eighth episode of the podcast of ISO 10. ISO 10 shoots a strange podcast. So, today we have much to work on, something I'm pretty interested in. But before that, guys, say hi. Hello. There you go. <laughs> How do you do? Welcome to the podcast. Oh. Hello, everyone. <laughs> we are also going to greet our guests, Wayward and V4. Hello, guys. Hey. Uh... <clears throat> I'm actually pretty surprised, Wayward, you made it here because usually you don't uh, see to talk much in uh, in the main channel. So I'm pretty surprised you actually found the time, and it's actually pretty nice to have you here. I just happen to have today off. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. What about P4? Perfect time. You were you, you were just ecstatic about the Yomo episode, weren't you? <laughs> P4? Are you there? Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's, uh, the good old being on podcast is uh, quite a unique experience, I think. Yo, Whoa, if, I, I, anytime throughout this podcast, somebody tell me if Wayward sounds like Tessiro or not. <laughs> Just saying. But Tessiro like, has like, um, a more lighted voice, let's say. Yeah, he does. Uh, a little bit more loud spoken, but it's it's the tone I'm looking at. Though Wayward has a really cool voice, I like it. It's really strong. Got some power behind it. <laughs> he sounds like a movie actor. All right, you got it, Nivin. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure if this is flattering or not. Oh, it is. That's awesome. definitely. Oh, good. would that not be flattering? <laughs> oh man. Okay, we yeah. can't stay here all day because, yeah, we are a little bit uh, constricted in the time-wise, so let's move on to the first thing, and that's recapping everything that's happened in the community. Um, <laughs> so, I guess we can start with gold, uh, good old DC, because reasons. So, let me check the challenge page for it. Okay, so, uh, we are up to the 8th um, tourney, like uh, very much on the podcast. They follow one after the other. So, the seven Dream Chaser was actually pretty good. We saw the victory of one. Uh, and I'd say it was I a very long time coming victory. We were all looking forward to it. I mean, yeah, one was really uh, idle. 
the, to be the victor. In the past DCs, he's surprise. gotten shut down by like Scarpy, the Bomb, mm. Vathana, mm. who else? He's, he's lost to some strange stuff, but you know, <laughs> he definitely took this DC. Yeah, to fight a bunch of strong people to get there, and hopefully he gets to win again. Uh, but let's say, uh, as a beyond of this, uh, beyond of the scene, I kind of train Yuzupal, so now he has the knowledge to fight off Yomo. So who knows what is going to happen next? Um, but yeah, uh, as of now, I will say that the Dream Chaser is modestly uh, balanced. I think there are people that don't fully agree with that, and I know that. But I personally think, as of now, most of the tourney is pretty balanced. Uh, if you put the work, anyone can win. Yeah, if you don't have Sigits in there, he's still banned. <laughs> Got to complain about that. <laughs> I mean, he's the king of scrubs be staying. Now. Also, you know what be... I really like about this? Uh, one, he knew that we were going to have a Yomo podcast, so he was nice mm. enough to actually win Dream Chasers with it. <laughs> it's all thematic. <laughs> it's all thematic. Thanks, Juan. You're the best. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh, hopefully, he keeps the streak or gets better in general. Anything to keep going. So, that was Dream Chaser 7. Uh, what else do we have that happened recently? The thing is, uh, these two weeks, not, nothing happened outside of tourneys, so we, all we can do is just uh, talk about the tourneys and then move on to our actual topic. Yeah, we <laughs> had, fine by me. We had two meme chasers. Because, two? yeah, two. The, last time we did the podcast, we had, a, we had a meme chasers 3, I think it was, on the Sunday, and so we didn't get to talk about that. And then last oh, week mean... was the Dream Chaser tourney, and then on that Sunday, Irish did a meme chaser. So we have mm -hmm. three and four. I think I missed both of them. Well, that you did. No, okay. you were you were in the fourth one. Let me go get this bracket. Was I? Because I don't remember playing any meme after the second one, or maybe it was the third one that they played, but I didn't play the fourth one. How Actually, bad is it in your memory? Uh, sometimes it's like the one about uh, the same one of the um, redfish. Wait, what we were talking about? <laughs> yeah, we're talking about beaches. What the hell, you? <laughs> But they are, uh, what, what, I, what I liked about the more recent dream, uh, meme chasers uh, was that Irish decided to go with a Swiss uh, format. And I have to say it works really well with considering the general premise of this tourney. Because mm. it, it's, not, it's not a very tryhard format now, although tryharding still happened. A shout out to Ran and Smallendu. <laughs> so we have to keep adding I, until it will be not tryharding at all. I would like to defend Smallendu because he plays Chirno and seeing a tryhard Chirno can be pretty interesting. <laughs> I mean, that is what I think personally. So, uh, so yeah, Meme Chaser. Uh... <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. But this is Swiss Wait, who, format. Who won? Who won? Are you Run? like? Yeah, no. no, it was small indeed for Meme Chaser. For uh, he was the tryhard oh, of the no. week. He ended up earning the title. But like, <laughs> Ad you... Adept went third and Zayton went fourth. Nice. <laughs> Let's talk about the format, though. Do you think meme mm. chasers should follow the Swiss format? Because the way it goes, everybody plays memes against each other. It's not exactly a competitive environment, but still, the top players get to show off their memes in grand finals. Which do you prefer? I think it sounds a little bit better because, uh, you know, in an extra turn you have to try really hard, and if you lose just two times, you're out, usually. But uh, with the new format that doesn't happen, you can play with everyone. And I think it fits the purpose of not playing very seriously better. Yeah, in this particular meme chasers, I know that like, okay, so everybody was having so much fun, right? So Irish ended up putting in like a sixth round. So everybody, everybody <laughs> wow. got that one extra round just to make sure they got their games in. But well, I played like shit, so. <laughs> I wonder why didn't I join this? Yeah, you were like AFK. You were doing stuff. God damn it. I was off for one. So no, you were eating pizza. Day. So people, no, 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 are me. you interested in those uh, kind of turnies because I don't see you there either? Wait, what was the last one I played actually? Uh, challenge? Well, I just don't really join turnies in general, but... I did see the last Dream Chasers and honestly I just 
saw a bunch of people misusing my decks. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. Nobody's going to be perfect there. And we get to witness their, uh, their art, we'll say. Okay, yeah, I didn't play the, the fourth one, but I was here for the third one, okay. No, huh. I know. Yeah, no, I wasn't there the day. I was in the bracket, but I didn't play. Because I wasn't there. So... Uh, okay. Uh, what, what do you guys uh, think about the the pre-submitted deck thing? Do you, do oh. you think it worked out or not? Oh boy. I'll let I Yankee speak first. Um, okay. Uh, I didn't see anything, so I'll go by the theory behind it. Uh, for what I saw, I mean, for what I saw, the decks were pretty uh, varied and then didn't follow any specific tier list rule. So you could have strong cards only if there was some meme meaning behind it, whatever meme means in this case. A, thema um, a thematic choice. Yeah, basically. Uh, the idea looks good, but the problem is there are still some kind of triards decks, so to speak. So I suppose people can still uh, focus on just playing by that. So on paper sounds good, on actual play I don't I didn't see so I can say. Let me just yeah, pull this image really quick. So basically I like the idea, but I will need to see how it actually applies. Yeah, the thing is, I like. I mean, personally, I tried to um, design the deck so that it would be hard to play any other way besides like mm. doing the meme thing in each deck. Mm. Committing to memes is important. You did the right choice there. <laughs> sounds yeah, sounds the right choice. So you were going with a theme then with every deck. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I tried I doing like that too, but uh, Gupman said I was just role-playing, so I had to stop. <laughs> uh, shout, yeah. out to, shout out to Sienna, though. He's the one who put this image together and organized most of these decks. So It's really neat. Yep. Yeah, he's yeah, a good slave. Is really good. He is good slave. Slave, get your... <laughs> when, are we, what, when are we going to pay Tiana? <laughs> uh, just, just pay him in Fox Girls. Uh, every time. I think he doesn't have Nakopara 3 yet, so... Ah, we gotta get on Pretty sure he has, I think. Oh, by the way, Nitsen wants uh, you to send him the picture of that, uh, the, the link to that picture posted in the uh, Twitch chat. Uh... Wait... Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, what, what picture? So, uh, were there any really interesting decks because, uh, well, I think I skipped over everything, but was there anyone who used them especially well in the tourney? Hmm. I don't know. Um, hmm. I haven't seen <laughs> no. all the games, so I can't really uh, speak yeah. much. I, I only saw the decks that I fought against. I wasn't watching the stream all that much. But, but did they use the decks right? <laughs> they used the decks, that's all I can say. <laughs> Like, I don't know, it's gonna take a lot of practice into a specific deck if you want to know how to use it, obviously. All I did was use, like, uh, okay, I think I did, like, one patch a game with Plebeian Binary Genders, um, <laughs> then a game with Yukari with Spin to Win, and then the rest was random. So, some of us ended up just doing a lot of random, uh, random character select, random decks, that shenanigans. But I kind of feel like that's the nature of the tourney. If you random it up or you do stupid shit, you're gonna have fun. That's, that's what we do. Or is fun not allowed? Yep. Not allowed. Well, of course not. <laughs> where, what do you, where do you think you are? You don't okay, play Zoku so... because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I think Nim Chaser went moderately well, so I guess we are going to see more of that, hopefully, in the future. Mm, did anything else happen? Uh, I see... Oh, Scrabble Friday! Yeah, that's a, that's a thing, that's how that happened. Yeah. That happened only once, and I think it was supposed to happen yesterday as well, but Sanger kind of backed off from it. Who knows why? Uh, he said because there, uh, today there was going to be um, uh, the Civil War thingy. Sounds like a weak excuse. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 
Yeah. That, that is what he, he said, so I am just repeating. <laughs> I don't really have a bracket for the Scrub Fridays, but I do hope to see one again, you know, soon. Because there's Dream Chasers, which is a load of mid-turning, but then Scrub Fridays is for, like, it's there. It's it's for the new players, and it looks like people are very interested in that, actually. Yeah, in the end, we ended up uh, using the original plan of having three different tourneys based each one on the level of play, strangely yeah. enough. Uh, I mean, it's kind of nice. I mean, back in the day, there wasn't anything like that, so... We need Ortega to win after this episode because he's a Yomo main. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're gonna we're here to teach him all about Yomo. But that, that's <laughs> not yet, we still have one more thing to go over. And it was... Uh, yeah! Narcon at to on Toho Sweden channel. <laughs> Tell us about that, because I actually didn't watch a single thing about it. I just know some, someone, I think Nator won a Suica figurine, and I really like the idea of winning stuff. Yeah. So, <laughs> from what I understand, I and Nator had a get-together where they, they everybody showed up at I and Nator's house to go and practice Soku or something. Just and on that day they they ended up getting drunk and playing a bunch of Soku, but it was a great stream. <laughs> that's exactly how you play Soku. I mean, the entire time Wes was like shit talking Genki, but you know that's beside the point. <laughs> wait, what? Wait, wait, what? Oh, oh yeah. What is, oh yeah. What did he miss? Wait, what? He was so regretful. He's like, oh man, why did I choose Genki as my teacher? If I wanted Valiator, oh, I would have chosen a top tier. Dead plastered. God damn. <laughs> But yeah, so and then and then they went to Narcon where they had their Soku tourney. Um, I, I honestly, however you imagine his Soten in person is what took place there. Wes was Wes was he was interesting. He was basically shit posting the the entire stream. Damn, he did it right. Yeah, he was doing it all right. Um. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's as you expect. Wes, Ionator, and Rand did extremely well in that tourney. Let me pull up the bracket really quick. So we had some representation here. Did they shield the Discord? Yes, I asked, I asked them to do it. Oh, nice. So we actually have some shielding going on in real life. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, we did get, uh, I think, two or three new joints from that, so it's pretty good. Oh damn! Ooh, I didn't even notice. Uh, here's the bracket. You might you might notice names like uh, Emperor in here. These either some old you folks or just unknown folks. I'm sorry. What did you say? You might have to enlarge it for the stream. Oh yeah. Yeah, every time it's really hard to see stuff because we don't test our pictures beforehand. I mean, like professionals. <laughs> just zoom in, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, top three was taken by Isoten. He's pretty, pretty good, yeah. Well, I what mean, else did you expect? <laughs> I mean, consider this, uh, in real life local scene, you will expect a Niger level of skill because I, oh no dear. delay. No delay, no nothing, it's real. <laughs> so, you know. Oh, there we go. Uh, yes, this is text for ants. This is as best as I can get it for you guys. But, yeah, pretty good. So... Beeps. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Morph is under I, arrest. I can't help it. <laughs> I the Soku, it's illegal. So Ionator ended up winning a Suicune figure from this. Uh, Ran so getting genuine. in second place got like a salt stone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. I, I think. Hold on, who was third place? Nakan? Uh, I think he won some Dujin. Yeah, he. I think he won some dojins. So you know who's the real winner here. But uh, <laughs> I'll pull up the prizes really quick for you guys. God, damn it! But yeah, they did shill the Discord. Um, it was on their stream, and I'll do a bit of shilling for them as well at the end of this stream. Why don't we have a uh, prize like? Oh wait, we had uh, Sota had a prize like a figurine and stuff. Oh, damn! I forgot. Uh, for Soda, I think it's only money. I don't know much about it. Mm. Never joined oh, them. Uh, that was uh, another Soda, I think. Oh, there were a bunch, and there were prizes every time, I think. Unless I'm I'm wrong. There was only a prize in the last one. Mm, then uh, I remember me. Uh, I remember the tourney that Seniors did, where there was some kind of prize. 
Oh, the, that was a different, just a regular tourney, I think, Senior Saturday or whatever. And one of the prizes. Yeah, I, th I think that one of the prizes was uh, an Android mm -hmm. and something else. Yeah. Um, the reason behind that was because he wanted to see some of the top players. And this is before he had, like, the soda plan idea. Oh, cool. Because he put, he put up those as prizes because he wanted to see our top players playing at their best in that play. But yes, okay, so on the right we see Ran holding his salt stone, you know, his, his victory prize. <laughs> and on the left is Ionator's actual Suica figure. So, you know, good the job, salt Ionator. Salt is just I'm perfect. Yeah, I'm absolutely. so jealous, I want that figure. Oh. And I want that salt stone. <laughs> oh, we all want that salt stone. <laughs> I want both! Ran is the real winner here. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Ho <clears throat> looking forward to hopefully, you know, more live footage of. So cool tourneys and such. And maybe next year we'll have more more of our Hisoten members at Narcon. So, you know, let's try to get there. Why don't we send a representative? Huh? Yeah. Huh? I mean, we, we, ha we have Monoai at Evo if that counts. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's I mean. good. Oh, should I pull up the clip of Monoai? You're expanding. Go ahead. Oh, sure. That's good. It's in context. Oh, oh yeah. In other news. Uh, I'd like to point out that we do now have a beginner role that, you know, beginners uh, can slap onto themselves for uh, ease of finding games. I'm hoping that this will help. I'm hoping that this will uh, help them f find actual matches since very often the beginner channel is just... The beginner channel is just who play and no response for an hour. <laughs> so I mean, uh, I mean, that's kind of true to the ESO 10 when you go and who plays? Uh, hey, no one hey, so use your admin powers to give that role to get Blaze Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Blaze. Yes, thank you, Morph. I'm gonna blame <laughs> you if, if he rages at me. <laughs> I'm taking it. In plain Blaze even rages. Oh man. So. Yo, Rip, I can't find it. <laughs> Good job. Ah. It, it's pinned in his open circle. Just imagine someone shielding pretty decently on Ativo. That, that's the image. Okay, so did anything else happen in these two weeks? I think we are done over everything. I mean, we could also mention the orange juice tourney, even though I have no <laughs> idea what was going on there. I missed it by like 30 minutes or something. I, I guess that's his Soten server related. Yes, Roselle hosted an OJ tourney. Um, mm. <laughs> okay, if you, I'll just say the results. It was first place Super Kako Sane, second place me, third place Sev, fourth place Elgran? Motherfucking Elgran. Yeah, that's right. It's because of the delay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh... Oh, yeah, I, I'm sure it was a good display of skill. I mean, was OG. it nice? Yeah, it was alright. Oh. Uh, oh, okay. the, the only thing is that, you know, Roselle wasn't entirely prepared for, like, seeding this bracket or, like, taking care of the bracket. He sort of put a challenge together for everybody to sign up for it, but he uh. didn't... He, he, so he had to run the bracket, like, manually. Uh, it, it took quite a long time. Actually, I don't remember how long that turn was. I think it was, like, five hours. Holy shit. Yep, five hours <laughs> of OJ. Oh, I mean... What have you done with your life? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> when we play, usually we play for like three hours, so it's not that far off. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and uh, in relation to tourneys and news, it's not exactly a past event, but I would like to remind everyone that the SA versus NA soda tourney oh. is gonna happen in August. All the information you need is over in announcements in Hisoten, 10, so if you are a burger or an amigo, go check it out. You might win some money again. Wait, there are money again? Yeah, of course. Yes. What? Oh, wow. I, how Senior's do... the absolute madman. Where do you even... Ah, forget about Don't it. Don't question it. <laughs> Where did he even find the money? To waste. <laughs> Osoku. <laughs> the guy. <laughs> hey, it's uh. the closest we get to esports. I yeah, know. No, if we get to esports, man, it's, it's all worth it. By the way, uh... You better type. <laughs> oh, okay. Whoa, what is it? What is it? Oh, got that picture. What's wrong? That you're Amigo can't handle right a bit of lag. <laughs> oh, Christ. Oh, oh boy. I mean, SA uh, is actually really strong 
player, so it's going to be uh, they, interesting. They have Thinners, they have Ari, they have, you know what, you know what, I'll just say it, they have one. One is, one is good in my eyes, hands down. Ah. Hey, I think we can finally move on from this. Uh, I think we Choice. can chill for a moment Civil War, did we mention that? Oh no, Civil War is happening today in like... What, three we hours or We're done with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah more or less. Like, like two hours, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Mm, so yeah, we have um, the Civil War. It's a battle to the death to see who has more people... Okay, okay, no, actually, what is the, the theme of the tourney? I actually don't understand. I, I think it got lost somewhere. I see it basically, again. basically, there are two circle jerks. One, uh -huh. one focused around Blaze Dragon, the other focused around Irock. And, they, mm. and they, they are going to collide to see who, mm. who, who circle jumps hard, harder. Sounds That's, that's pretty, pretty much it. <laughs> that's pretty hot. <laughs> Correction, test forced two circle jerks. Mmm. <laughs> Shout that. out to my bros. Quite hot. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact that you made these images... Uh, next level. <laughs> is, is it really next level? <laughs> A bit. Just enough. Oh right. boy. Uh, we, I think we can move on to our main topic of today, yes. though. Uh, the sandbagging. Oh, fine. oh yeah. So, uh, I think it could be an interesting topic because sandbagging is, you know, kind of universal. It's not just something you do in uh, fighting games, it's something that happens every time. I mean, it can happen, it can happen everywhere, so. Sandbagging. How, How about does it? it happen? I sandbag in real life all the time. <laughs> wow! Super, thanks. <laughs> oh man, um, let's see what we can find about sandbagging. So, uh, in first place, why one, one person? Okay, one person will even want to sandbag. What's the reason behind such, such action? Uh, first of all, let's define what sandbagging actually means, because everyone else thinks something else about it. Mm. How would you define sandbagging? First of all. I would say it's along the lines of not playing to the full extent of your ability. Just mm. purposely playing bad or worse or something. Mm. Yeah, the keyword here is pro, uh, playing bad on purpose, like holding back um, for reasons. Just just the holding back uh, and knowingly doing so, I think that's what we can define as sandbagging. Or just, you know, not putting the controller down and not touching it. <laughs> A, a, oh, real, a real that, sandbag, so to speak. That's that's another level of sandbag. We call that play, uh, being a practice mode dummy. Mm. Mm. But the reason Overall, to do it, though, it's... Uh, I mean, sometimes you just get bored. <clears throat> when you're Okay, when you're playing casuals in a match, you just if you put down the controller, you get to see what your opponent does. There's a reason <laughs> for sandbagging. I mean, yes? <laughs> I mean, it can, kind of works, but I, I don't know if that's uh, something I would like to do. <laughs> Sounds I mean, dangerous. Uh, give, give us uh, examples of when did you sandbag versus anyone? Like, did you ever do that? Mm, the thing with sandbagging is that sometimes it even it's... I, I, don't, I don't know if the word is natural. Maybe it's something like it just happens. Sometimes when you play someone that you know does can't handle fully some stuff, you kind of uh, you kind of slow down. It's it just happens. You kind of uh, you kind of ease up. And don't try your fullest. It's hard to explain. At least personally, um, if I ever catch myself and begging, it's because. Uh, I'm not trying to win really hard, or something is holding me back, uh, or I'm trying to do something stupid. Usually, it's one of those. Or if you're on Blaze Dragon's level, you could sandbag in tourneys. <laughs> See, that actually, it's a, it, that actually is a problem because when you get pretty good, uh, unless you have someone that is pretty good, you may start uh, sandbagging. It's kind of awful. For both sides, really. But the problem with sandbagging is you basically... Uh, I, I don't know if you can call it rude, but you basically tell the opponent uh, I don't need to play seriously, I uh, yeah. will just win anyway. It's yes. kind of... Mm, how would I call it? 
diminishing? Is that the right words? It's, it's mm. a bit of an asshole move. I well, some people will sandbag idea. in a way because they think that they're doing the opponent a favor by letting them actually do something. Mm, that's true too. In this case, I think it's better to actually ask the opponent if he wants to go easy on them or not. I mean, if you find <laughs> a beginner, for example, you, both sides know who is the better player. The, the point is, uh, when is it appropriate to actually sandbag? Because, uh, I mean, what do you think is better for the opponent to learn? If he gets absolutely destroyed in the corner, or if you actually let him uh, do some stuff like practicing combos on your block strings? I would uh, say the experienced player would say that you should never sandbag, because if you do, then you're basically enforcing or like supporting their bad habits, and they'll like they'll learn to do their bad habits more, so to speak. Um, That's how I I'm, The problem is that uh, if you're really strong, like if you play a new player and you are really strong and know a lot of shit about the game, if you go all out. He is going to die. There is no way he can even try stuff on you, so you got to have to slow down a bit. I think it becomes a problem when you face someone like, uh, I don't know, people that play in, uh, in Dream Chasers are pretty, pretty strong. Uh, but even so, maybe if you uh, like Blake plays, you can still uh, win pretty easily in a way. And I think in that case, sandbagging doesn't help us all because they can hold themselves pretty well and there is no need to slow down for them. Um, so I think in that case, sandbagging is actually bad. Can be good only when you have a really new lower level uh, player. Or so I think at least. Consensual sandbagging. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, that's... <laughs> Okay, that's good, actually. <laughs> Will you sandbag with me, senpai? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um. so, though, okay, if you're not better than the player, and then you're playing like an alt or something, are you, are you like, still technically sandbagging? What if the other player uh, sees it as sandbagging? Uh, it means intentionally holding back. Just playing an alt means you actually want to try uh, to learn that alt as well, and you have to play better players to actually figure out how to play with your alt. So I wouldn't call that sandbagging. If you were, for example, to play an alt because you gave up and you just want to die, I don't know, you just want to test something different and have no reason to actually switch over, then, then I think it's more disrespecting towards the opponent because maybe the opponent wants to have a serious match. Uh, that's kind of... I mean, well, if I want to play an alt character, it's kind of necessary for me to... You know, well, in Soku, out. there's also the idea of playing alt skills which seem inferior but have their uses still, or people might want to try and find their uses. That is very true, mm. because when I run sticky bubbles versus somebody, they're like... Why are you using that skill when you could be running, you know, this? Or I'm sure you've had many of your cases. Mm. Pretty sure I mean, everyone had these cases. I mean, look at me, I'm running Unpleasant Mr. Suica. Seriously. <laughs> and people call me retarded for it every time, but I can't find the use of it. No, man, it's okay. We, we'll, find, we'll find our alternative text. I'll find a very good use for Sticky Bubbles someday. So, someone has to define the new meta. <laughs> okay, it's gonna okay. be us. You you have to use the the mist and the, and the level one uh, level zero spiker, <laughs> so so you dodge at the same time bullets and Lee, easy, kind of. But yeah, uh, let's say there's an opponent that's much stronger than you. Would you prefer him to hold back, or do you want him to go full force so you can actually uh, have a have a battle? Uh, I think, I mean, I, I prefer when the opponent uh, tries hard. I mean, it's kind of sad when you die to the opponent and he's like, not even trying that hard, you know. I mean, so I think. <laughs> well, I, when you start a game and you fight someone, well, anyone, really, you should already know that you're going to be murdered, for one. Mm. But the idea of you know, being sandbag means that they're not into it. And if they're not into it, then why, is, why are they even bothering playing at that point? Hmm. Likewise, you can also just, you know, 
<clears throat> stop playing yourself. If you realize the opponent's sandbagging, you also have the option. So you can kind of intentionally let yourself be sandbagged. Now, the worst thing happens when both players decide to, uh, one side decides to send back and the other side, uh, side deci uh, decides to take it easy as well. Uh, yeah, at this point, I think the game becomes boring. Is that a thing that happens? Oh, yeah, I've seen that happen before. Mm -hmm. uh, I just recently had even a set against this one where both players started you playing worse and worse. And then we decided, nah, let's just quit for now because nobody is going to do anything. And let's be honest here, if two players on some middle skill uh, play, they should really play to their fullest. I'm pretty sure that gives enjoyment to both sides more than if both players start to hold back because the other person picked an alt and you picked an alt and whatever happened. This actually happened between us, Morph. We had a set of casuals some time ago, and we, we started off with a ranked set, and then we just went to our alts, and then it just <laughs> went downhill from there. Oh yeah, that, that, that actually happens. I mean, it's not uh, disrespectful or anything, but I think at some point it just gets boring for both sides. That's the downside of it. And I, I'm still conflicted um, to raise my... Uh, opinion about if sandbagging is good or not. I mean, on the one side, I want to test out my stuff against an opponent. I like, I don't just want to get destroyed in the corner 24-7. I don't see any value in that, and I don't think I can learn much from it. Yeah, but on the other side, I also, want, I also want the enemy to play at their fullest, and these two things just don't go together. Ah, uh, yeah, you're kind of right about that. Yeah, I feel like it depends entirely on the context. Like you said, but also just on that regards to sandbagging, I don't know if this really counts as one, but sometimes, and I personally sometimes play, if you know, way a little less sort of to win and more necessarily to like force certain situations that you don't really normally see as much and try to see what happens during this. Hmm. Uh, communication is the key there. You have to uh, ask your opponents if they want to play serious, if it's fine for them to send back or not. Uh, because some people can take it really bad if you intentionally play worse versus them. Absolutely. I know some beginners that if you hold back, they would actually be pretty unsatisfied with you. Hmm. Uh, we're not going to name anyone, of course. <laughs> uh, but what, what if if you are testing out stuff and you are super serious about it? Because I, mean, yeah, I can see myself. Should complain. I mean, if the <laughs> opponent then complains about you not uh, going at your fullest, then he should just uh, choose a different opponent to fight. I mean, I, I say that because I I can see myself trying to play seriously with the grab uh, alt with Yomo and. I don't think I ever had anyone complain about me using alts, but you know, you, you never know what happens, uh, so... Mm. I mean, I've, I've been using Grab recently, and mm. I, I, I get plenty of people asking why I'm using it, because, <laughs> well, obviously I'm trading off a very important tool for, you know, in general, but the idea is that, you know, I can make this work, and I have been making it work, but mm. they don't, they still don't see it that way. Um... I think it's understandable because when you play some alts, I mean, when you have um, the original skill or another alt which is way better and then you go to another alt that is more specific in the use, but you still get something uh, by using it, people get all confused about it because when you have something simpler that does uh, more stuff or does it better, so to speak. I don't know. And um, alts are simple to use, especially in the uh, in Soku, because some stuff looks good, but it's super specific and whatever. Uh, uh, I, I just I, I just think people get used to seeing that okay, these skills just aren't to be used. They're mm. it's just better options. So if anyone uses this, they're they're automatically you know sandbagging. Mm. Probably. Uh. Nah, I, I don't agree people with People who said that, I think I've not seen many people that complain about your use of alt skills. I have. to think about it. You have? Uh, yeah, I, I've seen it. <laughs> but you know, that's beside the point. Uh, as for examples of when we sandbag, actually, the only time I do it is when I'm facing somebody whom I 
have decided is just not better than me, just because I've beaten them so many times. That is about the only time I would probably ever sandbag, just because I want to see like where they're making mistakes. That way I could tell them, you know, like where I'd be able to counter hit them, where I'd be able to do this uh, in order to counteract their play. I mean, don't you do something similar to the people you teach, Genki? Uh oh. Well. Well, okay, so when you're playing somebody, I, I, got, I got distracted. I got distracted. When you're Damn playing it. somebody who is not, you know, on your fucking level, <laughs> uh, you you'll find yourself <clears throat> sandbagging at some point or another. Um, but this is so that way you can tell them that, hey, you know, you made this move here. You did a high jump nine into like my I don't know my five C, mm -hmm. and that was like really dumb or something like that. Uh, the problem is that I. The thing is that when I play someone, and I have, I have a bunch of good examples because I play against Splinter a lot, uh, I usually don't sandbag. Uh, not, uh, at least not the usual way. Uh, let's say if I sandbag, I try to pull off something stupid. Uh, so in, it's not really sandbagging as much as I'm uh, uh, focusing on something specific, like uh, a certain combo or setup. Usually when it comes to teaching, I don't even play. I just explain in-game stuff and how to counter and how to react to it and so on and so on. So I can't really help you here. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm probably the only one who does this? It's because of what I said before, you know, if you are if you are that good, then... And you said so too, like, if you are that good, then they're not going to have, like, much room to counteract or, like, do anything. The thing is that um, there isn't... Um, it's not that necessary to um, sandbag if you're playing someone because if, if they're losing you know you are beating something so the problem is that they are losing against something you are doing so they have to uh, work uh, to counter that I don't know <laughs> my, my teaching ways are kind of different here I think <laughs> Zaytan <laughs> tell me about your sandbagging experience do you not do it? Uh, I, I don't send back. Un unless specifically asked to, I never send back because, well, honestly, I just see it as disrespectful to, towards the other guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, huh. sure, I, I could apply what you're doing, just, you know, send back and tell, the, tell, tell my opponent what he does wrong, but I just prefer to do my usual thing and, well, see if they are even trying to figure out how to play around it, how to counteract it. Because in the end, it's a fighting game and, well, you kind of have to develop a sense for problem solving, since that's like 50% of, of, of what the game is. I mean, we've had some players who joined the server, and they played a couple games, got destroyed, and left because, like, <laughs> it was just too demoralizing for them. So, uh, <laughs> sometimes I just feel like sandbagging is like the solvent to that, mm. the solution, if you will. But I, I don't know. It's really up it's, in the air on when you should and should not do it. I think it's more. Uh, it's kind of a double-edged sword. That's this. That is the thing. Yeah, I don't really agree with sandbagging in that scenario because I feel like in order for someone, to, if they, if you actually want someone to keep playing this game, like or just fighting games in general, when they first go into a game, they should be in the mindset that they shouldn't expect to win many games for a while. That's true. Yeah, well, it depends on the opponent. If he like, if some someone is super new to fighting games, has never something played before, he would be probably scared uh, by getting completely crushed with all the opponents and begging. Mm. Like we we are now, let's say, a little bit experienced in fighting games, some more, some less here. Uh, if, for example, if we were to start another fighting game and we're completely new to it, we would know that sandbagging doesn't reach anything and we would probably never want the opponent to do so. But someone who is new to fighting games, he might not think that way and that can cause problems. Yeah, for some of us, um, Soku is our first fighter. I mean, I'm not going to say me, because that's not true, <laughs> but some people who have joined to Soten are like, oh yeah, this is my first fighting game, but I was first into Toho, so this game must be awesome, right? But, you know, it is a fighting game. <laughs> These four souls! <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I actually know that feel because it was kind of my first fighting game in a way, so... 
Yeah, same for me, so... so. Suku is my first fighting game, and I have no idea why I stuck to this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you seriously guys haven't played like Blaze Blue or Guilty Gear uh, or Mortal Kombat I... even? Be before Suku, I played like casually a bunch of everything, like Tekken... Do you send back in Tekken? Huh. Now that I think about it, I think I do. Uh, <laughs> Street Fighter 2. <laughs> well, now we know. It, it's just really hard to send back uh, actively in Soku for me because the game can, you know, go uh, the other side really easy if you don't watch out. I, I tend to send back even in Soku at times, but I think I do way less than the other fighters because it's really harder to be like, oh, I'm so good, the opponent has no way to of defeating me. Uh, no, it doesn't happen. Like, uh, it doesn't really happen here. <laughs> uh, what are we talking about? I mean, if you were better at the game. Oh. A man. That, that sounds like something. <laughs> One day, maybe. Now, um, the thing is, do you think uh, mocking the enemy um, is a good way to teach him as well? Whoa, well, well, hold on, hold on. So, like, in so, what sense? Let, let's say you have an opponent that, tech, that air attacks uh, every single time, or uh, and you just do a move he... Let, let's say you have an opponent who air attacks and tries to J5A you several times, uh, and you counter it like 10 times in a row. Mm -hmm. Do you... Uh, is that a mockery? Is that sandbagging or not? Let's say you just counter him and don't combo into him. You just let him air attack into your stuff every single time. So like what oh happened God. to Seagat? In a way... There, there was a video for this and I think I should go find it. <laughs> oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that you can show uh, it. I, yeah. I, think, uh, I think I understand what you're saying. I, I, I think I do that against Splinter because it keeps air taking everything. <laughs> oh yeah, Splinter does that a lot, I know. So I perfectly understand what you're saying. Uh -huh. oh, yeah, but the is, thing is, is, is it is it appropriate? Because I mean, you can just decide to uh, catch his air attack, combo him, and knock him down. Uh, but you can just mm. try to send back and just wait for his tech, hit him once, and then wait for his tech again. <laughs> um, I it's think it's not the best choice, but mm. you just do it to make fun of the opponent or to show his mistake. I don't know. Is that appropriate or is that still rude? Okay, okay. It's this it's kind of both, but you know what? It also taught me because I'm gonna tell you about a set that I had with Lionheart not too long ago, and this happened on stream. So what oh. happened is I was playing Lionheart with my Apache, and it was a pretty one-sided set. Let's say that. Um, it was like three to three to seven, um, but what happened was is he was corner pressuring me like, like really good. I mean I don't know how to explain Saki pressure, but every time I had a chance to air tech or uh, recover from the air, I would always do it like try to do it forward. And he had he you know he has like an air unblockable move from the ground, and he would spam that all the time because he knew I would air tech. And he's like, so do you see what I'm doing now? Do you see it, Zero? So, and it was then that I, that I realized, oh, it's air unblockable, and I should probably stop air teching this. So, yeah, I mean, that's how I learned about that. It can be rude, but I also learned from it. I think in the end, sand begging is really, uh, is really something that you have to consider uh, against the, um, the person you're fighting with. Communication is probably the key. Yeah, yeah. in the end. That's, yeah, that, we, that is the only thing you need. Kinda of boils down <coughs> to, you know, to everyone, to every individual differently because, well, everyone will see it in a different light. Mm. Some will take it to heart, some will get mad, and the others will just shrug it off and laugh. Okay, yeah. one more thing though. What about when you play the same character as your opponent? Oh. oh god, I so eight mirrors. This can That's... be either BM or you're teaching them. Uh... But, but what what if my opponent plays the character that happens to be my main? Is it BM? Uh, then I think it's fine, but let's say you just pick the opponent's character to show him stuff or to make him mad. I can't tell. I, I usually, if my opponent picks weak and I lose, I'm not gonna lie, I... I'm kind of getting unhappy about it, <laughs> but I have to accept it, because in a fighting game you can't complain and you will never know the opponent. Yo, we news in philosophy now. Uh, 
Oh man, mirrors kill me inside. It's like I, ca I, I can't. I have a song where I can't lose. I can't. I just I can't. Let, let's not lie here. It has something to do with pride, and that can hurt your pride uh, quite a bit. This is demolishing. Oh, I hate mirrors. So, yeah. What Coco says, what if you want to play it? I mean, if you, if he just feels like playing mirrors, I, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, but that's if he just picks it to mock you, that's kind of. Hmm. Mm. I've and... had people do that to me before. Actually, they intentionally picked Zuka to make me mad. Oh man, I feel and, sorry. And, and my natural counter for that was I just switched to my patchouli uh, who has a full reversal deck. Yo, and just plays uh, super tilting for the opponent. Do you want to hear my my uh, my counteract to that? Hmm. Nobody plays patchouli. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> the deck. Ooh. You should you should just master the mirror so nobody can do that to you. Yeah. Oh, that's you know what? That's why I play Irock because Irock is the <laughs> only person, the only player who has picked patchouli into me, and that's like the only set in mirror that I actually lose. And with Water Dew, I mean, yeah, he destroys me, but he j he's just a patchy main, so I just have to learn the matchup. I mean, at this point, I think it just becomes bad manners from both sides. <laughs> <laughs> then again, I think that's actually fun if that happens. It's basically a mess. So hold on, what if I picked Suica in a casual set between me and you, Morph? Would you see it as BM? And, like, what <laughs> if I was winning? Mm. Uh, well, if you were winning, then I would probably just be a little bit disappointed in myself, but I'm gonna accept it. <laughs> okay, well... Unless you pick Suica just to show me how bad I am, but... <laughs> <laughs> that would be, uh... I mean, I would be still disappointed and I can't complain about it, because, well, if, uh, if you're better, then you're better. It's not like I can deny it. <laughs> okay, true that. So, uh... What are you talking about? Oh, okay, right. Um... <laughs> So yeah, bad manners and all, but, 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 we are here for something else too. So I think we should just move on, on to the next plate of this menu. Am I right? Yeah, yeah finally Genki's <laughs> topic actually started. The, the moment he has been waiting for since podcast number one. Oh yeah, I'm We're literally not talking about talk. Yobukon Paku. Yeah, what you what what you were currently listening to was the first part of the podcast, you know, with with zero fuse. But now you get Genki. So. <laughs> zero. Wait, wait, wait! Uh, don't, don't leave me alone. I, I'm not. Okay, so I'm not alone actually. What I'm saying. So guys, um, we're starting with Yomo. Okay, so what do we know about Yomo? I mean, wait, what do we don't know about Yomo? It's the most used character. Well, third place, I think. Actually, uh, I don't she, remember. She, she used to be the most used character. Uh, yes. Like a few months back, uh, last year, I think. To the point where everyone was just mad at the character. <laughs> uh, no, people are still mad. That's the problem. They, they are still uh, mad uh, even uh, now. It's, the, the, it's time to stop video the Soku mains images. Uh, sorry, Yomu mains images. Yeah, good huh. stuff. I think we still have a lot of Yobu players today, though. Let me pull up the image that, uh... I, because Sinius did, like, a count, a member count on, like, all the Yobu players and whatnot. So I'll just show the top ones. Let me see if I can uh, find the image. I think it, uh, it's still Yomu and Sakuya is second place. I think so. Does, um, does that count all the people that just have the role? Or... Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the problem. Uh, Only the roll. That's pretty unreliable then. Yeah, it's roll counting, which is kind of not uh, correct, let's say. But I mean, who doesn't have a pocket Yomu? Like for real, <laughs> no joke. The B and Satan don't, for example. Yeah. I, uh, uh, okay, okay, that's a good one, but let's see. Most people have a pocket Yomu, so it's not so strange that there are so many Yomus as a role. So, uh, Zero... Actually, why did even Zero went to search about it? I could have done that myself. I have it here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Genki, just upload your whole Yomu folder. <laughs> That's another thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, Yomu is like 26. And Sakuya is 21. I think it changed a bit, but it's still um, like this as far as the 
um, rank goes. Yeah, I can't find the image. Let's go with that. Uh, I can give you... I can Mario, make you okay. one. Overall, we know that <laughs> yeah, Yoko yeah, yeah. apparently is the most chosen main, so I don't understand why. I, and I personally don't see that many Yomus around. So, what is the yeah. appeal of Yomu? What, like, why do you like to actually main her? Oh, man. Oh, man. So, basically, the question is, why do you like Yomu enough to actually play her? So, yeah, uh, guys, give us... give us something. <laughs> oh, I just like clone combos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, actually, actually, that's a, a good reason. <laughs> I give that, that's a good reason. Well, what I about you? Have... Out of everything, I've every character. I've tried every character multiple times. She, uh, she just feels probably the best to play as. Hmm. It's like she most a lot of her attacks have weight to them, in a way. Most of them. Now let's let's not include some of the uh, <coughs> less. But yeah, let's just, no. All right, but <laughs> I, so I, I want to go into them, but let um, it it would take. Too much time, but anyway, uh, so most of her normals—they feel they'll feel great. Her speed alone lets her move around, and you can just get around, and it just feels good to move. Mm -hmm. So okay, it's not related to like anything Toho. It's just how the character plays. I mean, I I also played her a lot in PCB Ag against her because uh, <laughs> she she ruined a lot of lunatic runs. <laughs> oh, I also awesome. like. I mean, I, I also like how she plays in Imperishable Night. The uh, her shot type is really interesting in that game. Oh, I love Yomo in Imperishable Night. Oh, so we have so actual nice. schmuck players. That's actually interesting. Mm -hmm. It's pretty rare. To them. I only made Yomo in Toho Nine. <laughs> I, I don't even like her shot. A shot type there. I can't use it. People tell me use the first level of the super, and that's it. I have no idea how to play Tone Nine. Uh, shoot me. Ugh. Okay, so what are we? Um, so are we missing anything for the general presentation? I mean, we didn't talk about much of the character, but what do we don't know about you? I mean, have you seen her? Green vest, white hair, a katana, that's as we was it gets. Two katanas. Two katanas. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. It's not a katana. One it's is a wakizashi. In front of you. One is a katana and the other is a wakizashi. Get it right. That is no. true. Um, I, no. I, I, do you want me to get into it? <laughs> I, I, I'm getting right up. I'm ready. So, okay. one of the swords, the main sword that she fights with is the Rakoken, I believe it is. And, and the other one is the Hakuroken. The Hakuroken, yes. The the Rakoken, I believe, is forged by Yukai. And, you know, she says this in, like, this is, like, one of her slogans or whatever. The things it can't cut are close to none. Uh, and then nice. the other sword she carries is, oh, fuck, what is it, Genki? You got this. <laughs> Wait, what? You, yeah, you it was gonna, a double. Okay. It starts with W. I just don't remember the name of it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's two swords. Uh, one is the Rakoken. Uh, the other one should be the Rakuoken or something like that. I actually don't remember. I never, oh, I never remember the name. I'm talking about like what type of sword it is. You literally just said it before. Oh, the Akuroken, I mean, it's pretty easy because if I'm not wrong, you can use the system card and it should be the uh, Wakizashi. Let me check up. <laughs> uh, it's a thing I always forget. Like It's my weak point. I always forget about this thing, I swear. Wakizashi, Every got it. Thank I told you about him. <laughs> okay, it's about Wakizashi. I knew that. Uh, so concerning Yomu, um, <laughs> well, let's talk about her personality. <laughs> I oh, mean, boy. okay, so you, you probably guessed this, but she's pretty straightforward and diligent. But the fact that she is, you know, so straightforward and earnest, it just makes her a prime target for picking on. So you know, don't bully Yomu. I, I mean, <laughs> and the like. have you have you played the friggin? Any story where Yumu is in, she's basically just runs around, slashes people, and that's it. She doesn't even so care about eating people. Well, so basically just like fighting her and Soku. Yes, <laughs> I know, right? It's, it's a perfect uh, extrapolation of the character. Well, the reason I say that is because she's easily manipulated. Like, she, oh. she is manipulated a lot by Yuko, you know, her mistress. And uh, to some extent, Yukari too, but I mean... 
that's only because Yukari and Yomu are just really close together. Um, on the account that you're manipulating in what sense? There. Manipulating? Uh, they they speak in such ways where they just they they say Yomu should go do things, but not tell her why. And then Yomu's just like, okay, because she has so much faith Basically, in her mistress. That was actually the plot point of uh, Izo 10, where Yuko knew uh, what the fuck was going on about the weather, and didn't care one bit because she knew everything, and just sent Yomu to do stuff. Yeah, that's, Classic. That's how it goes. And despite, you know, her strong loyalty and respect towards these characters, uh, she just she just doesn't understand them well, so... That's probably why she just agrees to have this stuff, honestly. I mean, you can so... see it in, like, fan mega and, like, some other fan games where Yum was just, like, a ditz, and then people pick on her for it. So... <laughs> I don't know if it's very canon, but it, it's close. I would say, though, that the character representation is pretty nice uh, move on to the gameplay somehow, at least the original part about being straightforward. So, that's nice. Yeah. Um, okay. Actually, I wanted character. to ask, um, is Yomu some sort of servant uh, for Yuyuko, right? Yeah, she's a like, bodyguard. Is there any reason why she put so much faith in Yuyuko, or was that never disclosed? Or is she just being a hardcore gardener? Um, it's, she was, she was... it's basically the classic, um, I don't remember the name because I don't remember my Japanese history, but it's the classic samurai and lord kind of um, deal, you know? Oh, that the makes sense, yeah. Yeah, the personal guard and the, the lord of war and stuff. Yes, before... Uh, so right now, you know, y um, Yomo is like Yuko's gardener, bodyguard, what have you, the henchman of henchmen. <laughs> but before that... Yeah, basically. Before that, it was Yuki Kanpaku. And Yuki Kanpaku is Ooh. the one who taught Yomo all about, you know, the swordplay, the fencing, uh, about serving the lord, that being Yuko. It's pretty fanon though, outside of one specific... Um, uh, uh, basically, it's uh, mentioned like one time, can canonically, and that's it, so... Yuki is kind of fanon, sadly, which is kind of killer for me. It, oh. Yeah, and then you, <laughs> Yomu is supposed to be like... It, it's kind of a weird relationship, because Yomu is supposed to be Yuko's, uh, like, sword teacher, if you will? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. She, this is like never mentioned. This is like rarely ever referenced. So. It's mentioned only in the Isoten Soku or Isoten dialogues, uh, dialogues when you finish a uh, fight, usually. Yeah. But, um. <clears throat> Wait, is it, not, I think... is it not pronounced Yuki? Is it like Yoki? Is that how it's Yoki? No, it's Yoki. It's Yuki. Holy Yuki. Jeebus. Okay, I was doing it wrong. I'm sorry. The, the O isn't pronounced, I think. Uh, but this character's had a couple of appearances already. One of them being Perfect mm. Cherry Blossom, Imperishable Night, His Soten Soku, Phantasmagoria, Flower View, and Ten Desires. Um, Do you have like a personal favorite appearance? Oh, you guys played the Shmup, so... I didn't really play any of the newer ones. I stopped after like... Mm. I stopped right when Ten Desires got released, but... Uh, oh, I me have, too. I have a lot of uh, experience with the earlier ones, particularly before Eleven. So I, I remember best from Perfect Cherry Blossom. Yo, Ten Desires was nuts though. It was like, okay, so everybody, <laughs> during this time when Ten Desires came out, everybody was kind of like having a rage fit because all the previous Toho games were like, you know, really hard. And then Ten Desires happened. It's like, oh, this is a breeze, man. Just play Yomu. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> Every time. God damn it. I actually really disliked her <laughs> shot type in Ten Desires. Didn't speak to me at all. Mm, it's yeah, basically slashing away everything that comes towards you, which is interesting. But sadly, I can't finish the game on normal with you. I need to play again. <laughs> Help. It's okay, just do it on Lunatic. It's easier. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've heard that actually. Um, but yeah, I think. Uh, mm, are we missing anything for the presentation? Uh, well, uh, do you want me to keep going? She, well, there, I think there is one thing that was not mentioned at all, and that would be Mion, the you know the half ghost, the ghost. Oh half. yeah, the fact that she has she is some kind of half ghost, half person, something something. Yes, she it's not really ever addressed much outside of her. Um, well, what's the name? Uh, basically, it's never uh, addressed the fact that she is a half. Outside of when she's presented as a boss, uh, that's it. It's kind of like she. <laughs> she has a uh, half ghost part, which is what people call Mion. 
it's kind, kind of, like of strange, really. Portable... Zoom doesn't build much stuff when it comes to, oh, yeah. you know, this. Yeah, he, he just leaves so. it up to the fandom. It's uh, just I there for see. the unique factor. Zero? Oh, yeah, uh, got nothing from, got anything from me? Uh, yeah, she's... Okay, so she's kind of, um... She's a weird package. She's got Zero? a... She's half human, half phantom, right? And due to this, her lifespan is kind of like a lot longer than uh, your average human. So, and she's supposed to be somewhere like under 60 years old, but this is not... Um... This isn't like mentioned much though, so it's really hard to source it. Guys? Yeah, yeah everything's fine. She was only mentioned to be under 60 during what, uh, it was 9, was it? The double shooter? I forget what the name was. Okay, I, I'm there. There's Magoya fan, a flower of you or something like that. The oh, yeah. The closest one. But yeah, it, it was because of that. I forget. I don't remember who mentions it, but they mentioned that it happens every 60 years and she didn't know about it or something like that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. So, so hold on. Uh, is her life expect. Uh, like, she is not immortal in a sense. Like, she actually uh, is alive. Sort of, right? She's like, half right? alive. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm not, she's not half mean, can she actually die or can she actually not die? I, I mean, it's presumably half... she was born half ghost. Yeah, that um, makes sense. I don't want to uh, know how that happened, but she's half not dead, you know. Half <laughs> dead is pretty good. It's no, like she's not the zombie god. I mean, if you are yeah, alpha, I was the zombie. If you are alpha live, you get double the life expectancy. I think. That's math. No, wait. I mean, uh, if wait. you're dead, your expectancy is zero. If you're alive, <laughs> uh, your expectancy is like a normal human being. So she should, could be only... Uh, I don't know how to describe that. That feel with no life expectancy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I think uh, we presented the character pretty well for once. Uh, we can <clears throat> move ahead, I think. Well, we okay, can so... ask the one question, do you have a personal connection to the character? I mean, I know she's Genki's wife, but what about you, P4 and, uh, and Wayward? I mean, nothing really personal besides, you know, the torture that was lunatics and all that. <laughs> <laughs> that must be some hell. It's not pleasant. Also, no one mentioned how she was a dork yet. Oh, yeah. She's a super dork, the best part. Um, what about you, P4? I mean, nothing really personal, <laughs> although I guess I'm like sort of dead inside. Does that count? Uh, uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll wake you up inside, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we can go with that. Um, I think we can move on, on to the next part before I start getting crazy about lore stuff. Um, so, uh, tell us how you play Yomo, or better, how you think the character should be played. That, like, I mean, it's kind of hard considering everything that goes on in Soku, but... Mm, okay, okay, um, try just a general outline, so it should be simpler like that. I mean, the general outline is pretty much how everyone sees it. You get up close, and then you try and keep them down. So you're but, saying that being a D6 hero is the best way to play Yomi, huh? Quite thoughtful. Yes. Yeah, yes, of course. <laughs> no, God. really, that doesn't work once you start hitting the people who actually realize that, oh, I can just stuff her before she gets close. Yeah, that's <laughs> so the real. So in the end, the real problem is just figuring out, you just need to learn how to move around a lot so that you can move around where they're going to be trying to stuff you. How do we actually counteract someone who covers the the Yomo D6 range? You wait. So you're it's basically a game about baiting the enemy and then going in. Yep, you just capitalize on every mistake that they try and hit you with. So this is then how you... me and Zayton did it completely wrong then. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how you personally play Yomo then, because that's what we're trying to figure out here. And what about you, P4? How do you play this character? It's more or less the same. Because, mm. I mean, as far as neutral goes, it's sort of just trying to work around the opponent's neutral and trying to get in. 
And then once you get in though, and get a knockdown, I mean, I guess you just try to keep them in pressure for as long as possible, and get as much momentum as you can. Huh, so once you're in, it feels pretty good then. <laughs> well, Unless they have a wait. DP. Yeah, that. The, the, it's just a mess once you get in, because you you have all the options there, but if they have one thing, then you're trying to account for trying to do anything. Like, you can, you can try and bait their DP, but once you do that, then if you don't have a safe jump option, then you're kind of just standing there for a moment. Yeah, baiting DP is, is always a pain because you're basically uh, dropping down your Okizama and... Unless you delay the Okizama, but even doing that, you still lose your turn, basically. Yeah, I mean, usually that sort of goes for the same for all the cast dealing with DPs, though. I think Yuma has a bit tougher time with them because a lot of characters, when they expect you to DP, they can still sort of hit them with a bullet instead. Mm -hmm. When they expect it, but Yuma doesn't really have that many fast bullets besides her ult 236. Yeah, basically. So. <laughs> Notice that uh, Yomu has no no good access to bullets. Like, the only thing I can think about is her 6C, of course, and her B bullets, and those B bullets are quite lackluster. Like, how does she handle neutral? Because I don't understand how you're supposed to win neutral that way. You don't win neutral that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, here we go. But how well, do you do it then? Okay, so. The main ways that you could probably get people is, once they're starting to throw out bullets, you can try and catch them by using 2-2-B default, because that'll that's fast, it'll get right on them, and the explosion will hit them out of any bullets that they set out. You could also just wait it out. It's much safer to do, because it, you could just move around. That's typically what I do. Once people get bullets out and start moving around, They'll eat up a lot of space, even if they're not throwing it out. You just have to be aware that they can always hit that space. So all you have to do is just try and bait them into using that space and then get in on them when they do that. Yeah, I feel like for a lot of bullets in neutral, a lot of times you can just, if you can't just put yourself in a position where you can react to their startup and then you graze in for free. So the, best part, so the best way to play Yomu is actually to be more patient and not being actually a D6 hero as everyone claims. Because what you're describing is just waiting for the opponent to make a mistake and then going in, and that actually sounds like a patient playstyle to me. Well, you're still D6 and you're just waiting and then D6. Yeah, yes, of course, after, after you've baited out their stuff, but it sounds to me like you're almost supposed to play, play it more patiently and you don't try to open up the enemy as you uh, as he's going to open up himself. Well, it's sort of a counter... it's sort of kind of both, because, I mean, if they know you're just looking for something, they can just not do anything and just wait for you as well. It just creates a sort of stalemate, so sometimes you kind of have to try to force something to happen, and sometimes you need to play a little more aggressively to do that. Mm. <clears throat> I think the... Uh... <clears throat> oh boy! <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the police. Um, I think the bullets are kind of... They aren't bad, but they are mostly like setup bullets. You basically use them as a cover or a somewhat extension of your normal, so you can kind of pilot people towards a specific spot. Something like that. B you bullets can... are kind of weak. Huh? You can very much like 2B and that'll send bullets up in a hmm. line that directly goes to where they generally jump after somebody uses yeah. bullets. So if you go there, they can't really throw the bullets out as much as they want, so they have to clear it. Yeah, basically, then you follow the 2B and you basically have a cover for your movement. It, it kind of gets weaker when you fight someone that has really strong bullets that fully beat your B ones, because then you don't get to use um, use them as much as you want, and you instantly lose neutral, basically, <laughs> in a way. Well, that's most of the cast. Most of the cast has a <laughs> something to deal with any of your B-bullets. <laughs> yeah, sadly. Though at the same time, your 2 to be default is cap perfectly capable of um, breaking through walls that they make up, so... Ah. 
in the end, this all would just revolve around getting closer. Mm -hmm. Like, you can use these bullets somewhat to affect where they'll go and what they'll do, but in the end, they'll probably clear it and still have a bit of advantage, but you now have a better position to get to where you want to be. Usually, I lose to Yomu who... Or Yomu who does a lot of 6C and 2-2... Two, two, I think it's 2-2-B, two, 2-2-C two, 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 uh, two, two sniping? Because mm -hmm. as a patchy player, I like to cast a lot of things. Well, what happens with Yomu is they either D6 me, or they snipe me. It's one or the other, and I always lose to one of the two. Mm. Usually for D6, you can uh, fake them out by shooting a bullet and then instantly going into a melee attack. That usually stops the D6 a bit. And what if you're a slow character like Swig? I can't just throw bullets and then melee <laughs> because until then I will get hit. Yeah, we're only B tier. What do we do? <laughs> uh, well, it depends on the character, really. Yeah, right, we'd have right. to we'd have to go through every specific character because every yeah. character would have to have their own way of dealing with it. I just need to wipe my moisture. Yeah, we'll get through this. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, for example, just to. Just an example, Suika can use the 5C right in front of her, and Yomu can't just go in willy-nilly, or... Uh, it's got the 50 frame startup of show course, she can go in the J5 aid you. You should be shooting those C bullets every second you're alive, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> every moment you are, you're alive, you should be shooting 5C, generally. Um, but if that doesn't work, just do a 6B into J6A. There are options, you just gotta know them. Though, obviously, uh, 6D Yomu can still work pretty well because she is super fast. She has one of the highest, if not the highest ground speed of the game. Unless I'm I wrong. I think she outspeeds even Aya, so that could be true. Yeah, she she does have the fastest space speed, especially on the ground. Like that's There's no other character that moves as fast as her on the ground. In fact, I think her flight's actually the fastest, too. Yeah, both are pretty f pretty fast if I remember right. That makes me wonder, if you were go if you're going to use Tango Fans on her, is that going to actually boost her, or is it still not worth it? Tango Fan, I think it only uh, boosts the walking speed. Which actually helps you know, because <laughs> hey, yeah. the walking speed is abysmal. Yeah, it's... Uh, it it basically, Tengu fans basically every affect everything that Tempest would affect. So basically, if you use it, and plus, I, if I remember right, it's like a flat rate that it boosts it. So it's not a significant boost of what she has, well, considering that she's probably not just going to be walking anywhere. So we're basically talking about the both sides, how to play Yomu and how to fight Yomu. Because uh, people, uh, a lot of people seem to have problems uh, dealing with her, which is completely understandable, but... She's fast. People she's really a lot. Yeah, the thing is that people uh, seem to not be able of actually um, stopping Yomo uh, to... Uh, stopping Yomo running around uh, all over the place, which isn't as hard as it looks, uh, at least. I think so. It's not that hard if you know what you're doing. It um, comes. It comes down to knowing what you what range your character has on her melees and what mm. cancel times you have on your bullets. So if you're, yeah. you just don't want to risk yourself getting out caught with two bullet or two dashes left out. Hmm. Yeah. The moment, uh -huh. the moment any Yomu sees you use that second dash to try and catch her doing something is the moment she'll just run up and get on you. <laughs> uh, you were saying P4? Uh, yeah, let's just, let's just remark since you're talking about the speed. Like, she might be fast, but um, so, especially in the air, her movement is kind of rigid once she starts, so mm. not yeah, actually hard for some characters to just... Um, because she isn't like Yuyuko or Iku or Reimu. Well, she has to not even that her, she can't really turn in her flight much at all, plus she acts the slowest out of her flight than any other character. So it's not... So it's actually possible for some characters to actually just outmaneuver her in the air. 
Yeah, I can I can see that. I think it happened more than once against uh, maybe Aya and some other characters. Now that yeah. I think about this, she doesn't have many anti-air moves, does she? I think only her Jade A is pretty good, but then mm. maybe the DP, but otherwise I can't think of good anti-air approaches. Her, her best anti-air is jump into J5A. Yep. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> it's, yeah, exactly. It's actually, yeah, air-to-air -air J5A is probably one of the best options. You can kind of use 2B? Kind of? You'd have to do that pretty far in advance. 2 to b 2 Kind of. Uh, I mean, okay, you know, honestly, just to defend Yomu in general, I think most characters in the game don't really have that much as an anti air. Like, real anti air, I mean, not like a bullet or something. Because... Well, Oku's got like 4A. Uh... <laughs> oh, actually, it's 3A, and that's one character over, tw uh, over 20, so. No, 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 4A is also anti air. Uh, it's not iron blockable, though. <laughs> Okay, you're right, it's not. But I it is anti air as hell. <laughs> it is, Even man. If they block 4A, they can 3A almost 100% of the time. Yes, that's sad. Yep. That's super sad. Oh, man. Um... But while we're talking about uh, playing versus Oko, how about uh, their best and worst matchups? What is uh, your mood against and what does she die to? I think I'll just sit this one out. <laughs> I mean, my, my general stand is that every. Uh, Matchup is 5-5, five, five, so I just see that this out well. Even yeah. because it's Yuko? Eh, uh, yeah. Every matchup You're is 5-5, five, five. you get out of here. No. <laughs> I said I will sit this one out, so go uh, go wild. Uh, I mean, I, I'll say, I, it's not, you know, it's not exactly any secret that I don't like, you know, fighting Oku at all. However, Fuck Oku. I don't think the matchup, the matchup would be that bad. Like, I've thought about it a lot. I've actually fought Mono Eye a lot recently. Like, I think I've played like 50 or 60 games with them total mm -hmm. recently. Uh, not in all one sitting, but, you know, we've we've built it up. And uh, as my, I, I lack the experience there, but it's not terrible. At least, you know, once you start to get things in a way that works for you. But I still think that, you know, the way you lose... Too many pressure options to make it, you know, five. Especially if they bring you in the teal orb thing. I don't remember what that thing's called, because the, everyone calls it teal orb anyway. Yeah. Well, anyway, if that that's a problem because Yomu has no way of really clearing that. Like she has two two B, because that'll go through and th through the graze and hit it. But if she's grazing at you at that point, you're already at a huge disadvantage. And if you try and run into it, then, well, you just ran into Oku and you can't press any buttons. That's not very good. And yeah, the, low pro the low profile on the 4A also makes it so that you can't do 2A staggers, which is a very prominent part of a lot of pressure. So you lose a lot of options, but, you know, in the end, Oku is a very slow character. You do have access to DP and all that, so... I don't know, it, it's just really a matter of how much can you hit her before she gets that, you know, one or two hits in. That still sounds like a difficult matchup for uh, for Yomo, though. Like, I don't think it's 5-5, five five, now that you mention it and the way you describe it. I would like to change my... Uh, uh, what it said, uh, to... It's, it's not that every matchup is 5-5, five five, it's just that it's generally not so negative for Yomu that it's impossible, you know? Well, I feel, like, I feel it's that way as well, because there's no matchup that Yomu wouldn't be able to handle. She has a yeah, nice exactly, kit overall. Exactly. It's just that, uh, you know, she has some where she'll definitely excel, like Alice. She can just kind of mm -hmm. wait out a lot of Alice's <clears> doll <throat> setups and all that. And once she gets in on Alice, she Alice has very little options. Yeah, I mean, uh, Utsuo is pretty hard, but I f don't feel like it's a uh, six-four. Like my my worst, my worst always uh, goes to five-five. Uh, in any other case, it's either um, even or better. There is no worse, at least on what I think. <laughs> Said that what about when back. you fight Yuko? I mean, that uh, I, I don't even see how Yomu is supposed to handle that because Yuko has that massive bullet cover. You graze. 
You, you, you does you, that every. You, you does that every single fight. It's not any different. You just I graze mean, the I, attacks. I, I, uh, I could accept that versus anyone, but versus you, Yuko, how are you supposed to graze through <laughs> something when the whole screen is covered in bullets? You graze you, and you graze, but you can actually since you Yuko's all of her bullets kind of track besides her butterfly ones. Mm. They all track, so you can kind of if you know that a Yuko's in the air. You can go up into the air and force her all her bullets to the top, and then you can move on. And then she has to set things up on the bottom, which is where you can kind of move in. Yeah, basically. Also, uh, you can just move around and then use the to be to cover your approach, and so on. You have your option. It's it looks hard, but it's not that hard. It's just not simple. Let's say. <laughs> it, it it's all very complex when it comes to Yuko. Even though it's actually really simple, like the yes. idea is just you graze until you can finally manage to get that one hit in. Or you can use the. Uh, I guess that one hit. Uh, uh, with that one hit, you mean JFFA. Like yeah, pretty in, much. <laughs> in a way, it kind of works like that for every character. As you, you mostly uh, run around, dodge everything, and go in when it's the time. Yuko is no different. Just made it sound like really easy. Just yeah. run around with everything and then go in. <laughs> it's easy to explain. It's just that playing the movement isn't that simple when it comes to it. Use the it's easier button. said it's than done. Yes. Go oh, colors. Nice. Oh yeah, we those won. are all the palettes. <laughs> oh man, give me some ghost yomu. Yeah, but in the bottom right, when she is uh, half half human. <laughs> P4. Tell me about your matchups. What do you think is best and worst? Um, so, yeah, they mentioned like Oku can be pretty annoying for Yomu and me personally. Though, personally, I feel the hardest matchup in my experience is actually Romilia, but that just oh. might be my playstyle. And just her defensive tools just kind of shut down a lot of the ways I like to play. I mean, Remy's defensive tools shut down anyone the way anyone likes to play. <laughs> yeah. No so Remy, Remy's a fun killer, huh? Pretty, pretty much. I'm pretty sure everyone here in this podcast and in this Twitch, uh, and all the viewers can tell you, yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um... But I guess yes, we can uh, move on. Move on to other stuff. Uh, on, on. Let's There's talk about thing. weathers. One more thing. Mm. We didn't Produce. talk. No, no, no. Hold on. We didn't talk about the best matchup. What is the easiest matchup? Oh boy. Yeah. I think I think this is personal. I uh, bet it's Sakuya. What do you say? Well, I'm gonna put uh, my money on Patchouli. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I'll start. If if you ask me, I will say that an easy matchup is probably okay. Let me think. What I okay. I swear. It's not only relatively easy to understand, but it's also fun, and this is Marisa. Too much DP? Marisa. Do you just bait DP all day? <laughs> I, no, I, I don't know, I just enjoy... Uh, it's, it's really hard, because Marisa is really strong, but it's probably one of the most uh, fighting game-like matchups. Maybe it's the DP, I don't know. Mm. So yeah, that that is my my vote. My vote is for Alice. I I actually really like the Alice matchup simply because, it, well, for one, it is easier, but the real reason is because it kind of outlines the way Yomu Yomu's game plan in general. It's like she has it lets you get in, and you know that as long as you keep them down and in pressure, that you'll you'll be winning the match. But the moment that you allow them time to get out and do what they want, then you're going to be struggling to do anything. Yeah, I would also say Alice as my personal favorite matchup. Um, as for best matchups besides Alice, I guess Yukari is probably also up there in most favorable for Yomu. Yukari? Oh, that's Yukari? something I would like to hear you elaborate on. <laughs> that yeah, Yukari pressure. That Yukari neutral. Let's hear it. Ooh, tell me that. So, the thing is, well, this heavily depends on whether or not you can actually OK Yukari. Like, if you can, it's actually pretty easy to keep her in pressure once you get in. 
and she doesn't have any of the good meterless reversals or anything. And plus she has a really big hurt box for you to pressure. In fact, her crouch is so high that you can just instant air J5A her, J5 here. Sorry, J5A her without even a fuzzy or anything. Well, you can generally fuzzy with Jung, but yeah, against Yukai it's easier, but... Uh... Maybe it's just my personal problem, I just can't deal with Yukari. It's probably one of my hardest matchups for some reason. What's a fuzzy? Oh, I can't explain that. Oh, I actually can't. I'm sorry. Oh, man. Okay, no, okay, basically a fuzzy is like... Uh, you basically are hitting the opponent while he's crouching, but you are hitting their standing hitbox. If that makes any sense. It happens when... They were previously standing, but were still in stuck in block stun. And if they block the next one low, um, the attack will still connect, even if it would not have hit them crouching. If it would have, like, if that attack would have hit them in their standing state, which is what happens. Okay. Yeah, it's like you are basically eating. Um, you are meaty eating the standing hitbox that is changing into the crouch, crouching uh, hit, uh, horse box. Cut them. So you're basically hitting the remains of something that isn't uh, least changing or something like that. It, it's simpler to, to show than explain for some reason. Also, I'm bad at explaining fuzzy probably, yeah. <laughs> It's pretty important for uh, Yumu Pressure because uh, her fuzzy is really good. Mm, does, does her fuzzy work? Because every character, I mean, Yumu uh, is, small, is small, so I don't know. It does it work against other small characters like opponents, uh, Yomu or Suikas? Uh, uh, it should work on everyone, but against Raisin and Suika, it's kind of harder, but it still works. It's, it's, you can still hit them, as long as you can hit them with instant air J5A on their mm. stand block, you can fuzzy everyone, which I believe is correct, unless Wait. Suwako, of course. We but, don't count Suwako. Yeah. Well, you can fuzzy Suwako's lily pad, so... Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of hard, it's kind of strange to fuzzy Suwako because her crouching animation is her standing, and her standing is the crouching... <sighs> Yeah, it's kind of yeah, it's kind of mixed. <laughs> Yo, Suwako's um, a character. <laughs> I know, right? It's a conspiracy. I want I want to talk it's about that next podcast. I want to talk about the Thai High conspiracy. I believe in that. <laughs> okay. I still believe in that. Uh, up till now, we have discussed like how you guys play Yomu Kantaku, uh, how like what her matchups are, and you know some of the things she's bad against. But... We forgot to mention the weathers. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the weathers. What is her favorite weathers? What is her worst weathers? I don't know. I, Tell I me can about already the have a, I, I already have a guess. I, uh, let me guess, you guys love blue sky a lot. And they hate river mist. Tell me it's river mist. <laughs> I mean, who, okay. hates, who doesn't hate river mist? <laughs> Call me crazy, but I think pretty much every weather, except obviously river mist, is good for you. <laughs> you Literally. Yes, Typhoon too. If you are if you have clones, you are winning the Typhoon. And even without it, if you oh, do that's... the right thing, you are still kind of holding well. Unless the opponent is like Utsuo, then you are kind of screwed. <laughs> yeah, Typhoon is Typhoon is always just situational, but mm. you know, it, it's not necessarily you know always you're not always dreading Typhoon when it comes over. Mm -hmm. But I'd agree that there's. Besides River Mist, because Yomo can't really do any anything in River Mist, I mean, it just ruins. It's river mist. It just ruins fun. But yeah, every every other weather she's perfectly fine with. And also, as for good weather, I also argue Diamond Dust would be good as well. Although that's good for everyone. You say Diamond Dust is good, but um, is Yomo pressure really that strong? I never felt that <laughs> she has strong pressure. Uh, I admit I haven't fought many Yomos around, so I can't really tell. But is her pressure strong or not? I know that her spell cards don't assist her uh, pressure, at least. Wait, are we talking Unless Diamond Dust? Clones. Are we talking about Diamond Dust pressure or pressure in general? No, uh, let's... I mean, it goes hand in hand. Oh. Oh. So I would say her 
mid screen our pressure isn't very good. It requires like heavily um it's heavily based on reads. And what you did generally her goal entirely mid screen is just to push them in the corner because her pressure is just that much better there. Sad And so because and you know when you knock someone down on diamond does they can't tech out so they're in the corner. So you don't have to deal with that. And the other thing is I guess you can do a lot of bullshit cross-ups in Diamond Dust because you know if you can't tech. And you has uh, a lot of those. Um, if you're lazy in Diamond Dust, you can also just uh, do J2B and start the Okizeme with one or less for the opponent, which is decent, I will say. It's nothing great, but it's still good. Yamo pressure is basically a bunch of staggers in frame traps. Mm. Yeah, if she can. If you let, once she starts realizing that you're not going to be, you know, contesting things because you're afraid to get hit, then she'll start trying to wear you down with the bullets and all that nonsense. Yeah, basically, Yamo pressure is more real as you are more spooked. So it comes, I mean, <laughs> it's not it's not so much to crush setups. It comes down to like knowing how Yomu pressure works. Just like her fuzzies, her her in like wrong blocks. I mean, once she's in far five A range and far two A range, then you know that's kind of fifty fifty for wrong blocks. And once she has meter, she can kind of get to a point where it's real difficult to actually escape without getting hit by something. Mm. But you know that actually sounds a bit like uh, her being a grappler type. She <laughs> just waits uh, for the right opportunity to go in. Mm. A gra uh, I mean, a grappler. It's kind of. Okay, yeah, I, she also has a grab. Don't forget. I mean... <laughs> oh boy, we I can mean... talk about that later, plenty. <laughs> um, uh, you might as well go into her skills and spells. I I won't know, but. Uh, yeah, mostly you know, pressure just uh, yeah, frame traps and that. It's just basically, it comes down to a mind game of once the Yomu knows that you know how to escape, then they're gonna be just trying to mix things up to catch the escapes, mm -hmm. or she's just gonna try and you know get those wrong blocks to try and force you to do something, or or you know grab, but. Yeah. So compared compared to the other characters, pressure is Yomo's pressure relatively stronger or weaker than the average? That's oh what I would like to hear. Mm, depends what is your average type. Because if you go like Yukari pressure, where you get it by a random teleport into Ran, that is really really strong. Or if you go by like Sakuya, where she just set up you into us low health, then that's good too. Yomu is just mostly frame traps, stagger based, and you, uh, you basically have to scare the opponent uh, into not doing much outside blocking. Kind of. Or trying to escape and getting hit by the stuff that is following him. It's kind of just... Mm, you're comparing it to a bunch of other things that aren't really the same in what they're trying yeah. to do. It's like, uh, like Teki Yuko, she can just kind of get in with J2A and then she has bullets that can catch anything, you know, that come out real fast, she can kind of just use them. Uh, but, you know, once she starts using melees, then she has a bunch of options still because she can go back into bullets and skills. Yomu, she just kind of uses melees until, you know, certain points happen, so... So in a way, it reminds me of Utsu, because both of the pressure work similar, because uh, Yomu, doesn't, uh, Yomu doesn't seem to like using bullets mid-pressure. Mm. It's not that she doesn't, it's just that using them is a risk you have to be willing to take at that point. Yeah, you're basically gambling uh, higher, de uh, higher speed damage, but giving the opponent an easy way out. Yeah, I feel like Yomu pressure is... Like I said, very much based on guesses at any point, and 
in order to open someone up with her, you kind of have to take risks. Like, if you never take risks, your, your opponent's always, and your opponent always blocks correctly, they'll, they'll get out for free every time. But from what I hear then, it means that her pressure is pretty weak and you have to rely on catching opponent's escapes. Mm, like, I mean, she doesn't seem to be uh, someone who goes for crushing orbs. That comes also, with that comes with respect, and Yomu can get that respect because you know she's fast. She can keep yeah. on you. She has the low J six A that lets her get back in if you're not careful. So she can keep you there, and you know you will make mistakes eventually. So it's just about how much respect that they're willing to give you and what they know that you're capable of. And I know meter also helps a lot. Especially mm -hmm. things like clones make pressure a lot easier. Clone pressure is actually one of the, you know, that when Yuma starts clone pressure, then you're, you know, then that's actually real pressure. And then then you're in the heat. I think my favorite is like when, a Yo when I see a Yomo do like 623C and then I get hit by a uh, Slash of Eternity afterwards. I'm just like, yo. <laughs> or no, oh, is it 63C or is it the Rekka? Because at the end of Rekka, they can do Slash of Eternity. And I oh, always lose to that. 214, 214, 214. It's the oldest trick in the Yobo book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's I wouldn't really call that pressure as worried as a gimmick. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I see it as pressure though, because I always mash it after um after the after full Rekka, because I never watch the enemy's deck. Pro tip: watch the enemy's deck. Ooh, uh, that's the scrub technique. Don't teach anyone wrong things here. <laughs> yeah, don't read decks. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, but uh, pressure with spell cards is mostly clones and. I mean, usually spell pressure is kind of a, uh, something um, unique to each character because, like, Sakuya without uh, without spell cards is kind of weak as pressure as pressure. Same for Yukai. Like, spell cards are really important to pressure someone in general. Um, Before we go into her skill and spell cards, I would like to ask: um, Do you currently agree with her tier placement? I don't know what's her current tier placement. I think it was B plus. B plus so around the average. Mm. Yeah, so I what mean... do you think about that? Uh, let's see if I can repost the tier list. Uh, Got to look at the pings, uh, pins. One second. There we go. I'm just gonna post it in the Twitch chat. I think. Yeah. One second, and here we go. Oh, so she's basically the sixth best character in the game. Eh, sounds do you agree right. with that, or I... do you think that's a little bit too high? Top ten rated of her. It's not bad. I think it's more or less accurate. I don't think she's that much better than Marissa and Tenshi to put her half a tier above, though. But mm -hmm. that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, yeah. maybe it, sh it should be like. Uh, Marisa then Yomu. Yeah, I'd I'd say it's it's mostly fine to where she I could see why B plus would be, you know, where people generally put her, but I, I'd put her a bit lower just because once you realize everything she has, while she's not, you know, hurting anywhere in particular, she's not really doing, you know, excelling enough in an area to really put her above a lot of the others but then again this is also soku so keep in mind the tier tier list isn't as important so it just always remember that play yukari uh, yuko i mean <laughs> <laughs> yuko is just really really good in general Yuko Yuko just is solid all around like the one bad part is she has a somewhat slow tech mm. yeah Oof, um... Well, now we've got also, before we go into the skill cards, that one topic um, called Yomu Community Meta, and I don't know what we were supposed to talk about uh, there. Uh, so, I mean... <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, basically, <laughs> what do you think about the general going of Yomu as a character? Because, um, 
let's say that you don't agree much with the general Yomu doing the Rekka, the Bees, whatever, and you would like to see more grabs, uh, Earth Carving Cut, uh, Flower Head, and so on and so on. So, what do you think about Alts and the fact that they aren't as as used as they sh those should be, kind of? So yeah, about the, the general usage of Yomu, yeah. Well, for the general usage is general is you know, it's the basic idea of what's good. It's like <clears> people, people always say that you know if you want to do good, these are the cards to use, which is typically just her basics. You know, for skills she has the DP and all that because they're just you know people value those, especially when they don't have the them themselves. But you know, the other skills that she has are actually not bad. I'd like to actually see more of them. The Mm. Slashing a flower upon one's head, the alt two one four that comes down from above. That one's actually really that that one's solid. You can get really good damage off that. It can catch people jumping or doing things. It's not perfect, but you know you can definitely get work done with it. Uh, things like the uh, the only ones that I'm really not so keen on people actually you know trying too much is the other alt two one four. I f I forget what that one's actually called. It might just be called Sucker or Run Fast. I don't remember. <laughs> I really don't. Um, but that one, that one's just, it's too slow for what it does. But it does have the highest single hit damage, so if you use it in combos, it actually does do. You know, so, it's... Is yeah, that like, like the uh, the flying flaming sword attack? Like, is it that one? What? Yeah, that, that's... that's uh, yeah, yeah what that's, cutting, that? the run past. that's cutting one's, one's flower. Yeah, it's slashing... Slashing one yeah, flower. That's the one that, ah, okay, go ahead. Why am I dying here? <laughs> it's the one that I mentioned before, for slashing a flower upon one's head. Thanks. At least, yeah, that one. That's the one that I mentioned before. That one is that one can do solid work uh, as long as the opponent blocks it. You're safe. You're not positive, but you know you can still do some things from that. It's it's really good. I'd say experiment with it a bit, uh, as well as their alt two twos. Those are actually solid all around. So as long as you can work you know, a solid way into the deck and get familiar with those, those actually aren't bad in general. Um... So if I do start to talk about her old skills and cards... Yeah, yeah j just a second. Uh, okay, I'll get to the page. So do you think, uh, from... hold on, do you think uh, most Yomo players that we have in the Discord server, do you think they, like, overvalue DP? Do you think they should be using something in, uh, else instead? Like, Ooh. How, what is their usage of bullets? You know, do you do you think they do you think they play too neutral too often? Do you think there's not enough D six? Uh, there's probably too much D six. <laughs> so less less Unga. I, I can I can approve of that. Too much D six from every Yomu I see usually. Because I've seen a lot of Yomu players, and I mean, none of you play the same. It's the, the most common Shut gameplay it. style I think I've seen is like Genki's Yomu, and then. I want to say one's Yomu, honestly. <laughs> Shout out to my times? man, West. Shout outs to one. And to West doing 60 like a madman. Uh, gameplay Yomu? Hmm. Well, wait, you ask about bullets? Mm hmm. What do you mean? Like, what do I mean? You, like... mean, you, mean sk you mean skills or normal? Do you think people use like you know five uh, B too much? You know, just general uh, mm, like how most I, most of our Yomos and how they play. Like, do they use too much five um, B? <laughs> do they use too much uh, like six six C or something like that? I think the general Yomu uh, runs around pressing J five A too much. Like, no joke. Uh, one kind of does that. Even if he is pretty good, it kind of One just does, does that, that a lot, and that gets him killed. And Wes is the same. <laughs> okay, damn it! I wanted to be nice. Yes, they both just run around the pretty. Let's be honest here. That's how it is. <sighs> so yeah, I think there's kind of a hyper usage of the higher mobility Yumu has, and not enough of the bullets. When we get the picture to show off there, that describes the current Yomo meta pretty well. <laughs> At least on lower levels. I mean, it's not like yeah, your bullets are go. that exceptional by any means. The best I, description I, is just she's an angry rocket. 
Look at that. Oof. I mean, I wouldn't say angry, but, you know, the other part, that, that's <laughs> fine. Her <laughs> shooting forward like a rocket with two katanas. Yep. But yeah, uh, use. I'd say experiment with the bullets more because they are the tools that you'll always have, and they do have their uses. Make use of them. Don't just rely on pure A. Oh damn! No, nah. I mean that's actually good advice because what you're saying is play actually neutral a bit. <laughs> yeah, preach it because I think it's really important. People kind of forget that you can just sit around, wait the opponent, shoot some bullets, shoot some hopes, shoot some two to be, you know, shoot. Just no slash, shoot. Um, what about the uh, outside of the normal usage of the stuff uh, Yumu has? What about the skills? Uh, so I think we can go over skills back cards. Uh, it should be interesting. What do you think? Tell me about them. Tell me about the Yomu cards. <laughs> no, start off with the grab. I just want to listen oh, okay, to okay, the okay, grab. Okay, That's okay. the thing. <laughs> just a general rule. We are going to uh, jump over DP, Rekka, and Medium's Bind uh, to, to B because those are kind of overused. We are going to talk about everything else. So even the Reflector, which isn't as used as it should be. So let's start with the yeah, grab. Because... So obvious, but I want to listen to the grab. Just explain to me how okay, do you okay. use the grab so, and what it <laughs> uses, okay. and do you and should you level it? Okay, okay. So intolerant of VC. I let P4 go because it seems pretty hype to explain. <laughs> so go. All right. So in my opinion, this is in this game where which Tassifro just for one. Yeah, we really hate grabs. So let's make them all <laughs> shit. <laughs> Honestly, I think Yomu's grab is probably the most workable in terms of how fast it is. And what it does, it just doesn't do enough damage. It does no damage at all, right? You just grab him and uh, that's it. And well, don't put no, him for a combo. If you hold the uh, BRC button, whichever one you input it as, she will do a knee follow-up, which will give oh. you a knockdown. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, I just thought uh, the grab releases them and then he's open for a little combo. You didn't? You can also do that as well, yeah. But wow. God damn it, why did I know that? So I, sort I, of, uh, the sort of issue is uh, the initial grab puts so much rate proration on it that like your follow-up usually doesn't do that much damage, at least until higher levels, which is why yeah. if you're running grab, you should really run four of them and try to level it as much as possible. Um, I would like to chim in this uh, because I was studying the grab and there are two things you can do with the grab you can either try to play grappler and actually use the damage you get which kind of amounts uh, top 800 doesn't get any better than that it's like 900 800 top or you can try uh, yeah it's a knockdown but it's a kind of uh, uh, you can also do and try to get resets the grab actually grants you reason, but the problem is that in that case you are sacrificing damage and hoping the opponent uh, resets himself in the air. Though I think it's an interesting uh, approach to the skill. Uh. Okay, well I've been using grab a <laughs> lot, especially like these last few weeks. Uh, I think it's actually like I'm starting, I'm coming around that it's actually like a really good skill. I, I really do think, because for one, defense in Soku is very much just even on a base level without DP is already pretty good. Like, you, you can't. It's really hard to get through people's defense just regularly. But Grab ignores that. And as they said, it is it does have heavy proration, but you can grab, you can grab people a lot. Like, that's... I think that's like the best thing about it is because people overly rely on the basic defense you can grab people a lot I grab people four times in a row and that amounts to like almost 2k especially if you play the damage right like yeah uh, and on some characters you can actually get about I mean this is gonna sound insignificant but with level one grab I've been able to get about 700 sometimes 800 damage off level one that's pretty um, fair, to be honest, for someone who can open up pressure easily. Mm. 
and once people start realizing that okay i'm being grabbed too much and this damage is actually adding up especially if you got levels into it or hit a weather then they're gonna start having to try and get out which then you'll have even more options because of how you know the way her you know she staggers a lot already so it's just very you they you really have to struggle to actually get that next hit or escape in speaking of weathers um that's another thing that grab actually gives you utility in it's a way to manipulate the weather meterlessly mm -hmm. that yomu has if the opponent just like for example if your opponent has the health lead and typhoon's coming up they can just sit in corner and block until it comes up but if you have grab then they have to worry about getting grabbed and then that causes a wall slam, and they no longer have Typhoon. And does the, gra the grab work in Typhoon as well? Yes. yes. To yep. save time. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. it, it, I think, it, as you said, you can pretty much manipulate the weather how you want it. Uh, you can also, hell, since people respect Yomo's pressure, or just Yomo in general, because, especially on Wake Up, you can actually just run up and grab people. Like, people don't expect it because she has a lot of other options to do. Like, I I can literally run up and grab people three times in a row because <laughs> they're expecting, you know, actual pressure. Especially since Yomu can just chase pretty much anyone on Wake Up. Man, that, that sounds like fighting, like a normal fighting game. You just go up to them on Okizama and grab them. <laughs> the mix-up. <laughs> it, it's, it's honestly, it makes the... It's really interesting how, and once people start trying to account for it, then it gets even better because then you have even more options to try and catch them. Yeah. So this measly, you know, 400 damage or 600 damage that you keep, you know, piling on now suddenly turns into, you know, an unnoticeable 2 plus K because they tried to escape the grab. Hmm. Nitin but... brings up a good point. Do you think this is Netflix exclusive? No, why? The grab is actually super fast. It's not like a Suica, which is like 22 frame startup or something. It's like the speed of the grab is like it's it's like uh, yeah, it's like 12 frames or something like that. It's really plus it doesn't have like any noticeable you know effects. It's it just happens. oh, it's it's 13. Basically, it's uh, slower than a real than a normal fighting game grab. But in a game like Sook, where the average speed is 7 frame, it's still pretty decent and it's not really an online thing. It's absolutely real in, a, in any uh, set of game, even uh, uh, in real life, let's say. Offline. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's absolutely usable in an offline setting easily. It's, a, it's, just, it's just, I think people underestimate the grab because of how heavily prorated it is and <sighs> i thought that way for a while as well because you know just seeing your damage just plummet like that is it doesn't seem very satisfying but after a while of getting used to you know seeing it you, eventually you kind of see it just kind of build up especially if you get it to level three you can actually just see you know you get two or three grabs and their health is very much down yeah oh, yeah I'd yeah, better it's... start looking out for Yomo grabs. I don't want people using yeah. this against me. Honestly, uh, f since from the time I started playing Yomo, like three years ago when I, I came to here, I <laughs> see. Uh, I really wanted the grab Yomo to be a thing, but people told me no, it's not that good. But even now, I still think grab Yomo can be uh, totally a thing because it's probably one of the most usable grabs in the game thanks to the startup. It's just that the damage is really, really sad compared to a normal oh. grab. But we have Wayward that is trying really hard and P4 too, so who knows what's next. I just think you don't need, you, you just can't approach it like a normal grab. You, mm. have, you have to think of it differently. Mm. Yeah, you're, not, I, you're not going for pure, you know, I'm gonna do, you know, 3,000 damage with this. I'm, you're just you're stacking it up and trying to mess with their head. I mean, my only issue with it is it overwrites default 623, which mm. C version, it just gives you so much. It's a <sighs> one graze move. You can use it to poke out of non-tight bullets. You can 
it's the only thing you can combo into off of straight 4 and 2 eight hits without meter. And with meter, it makes it better because you can actually combo into stuff like Green Sword and Flash of Eternity. Yeah. Well, another thing with grab is also that once their health gets even lower, once their health starts hitting like that 10% point, then they have to be really careful because, you know, they can't risk a forward getting grabbed anymore. And even though you do lose the damage off of uh, 2A and 4A hits, uh, off hit stun, you can actually grab people out faster than if they were blo in block stun. Mm. So if you actually hit them with a 2A and as long as you're not, you know, too predictable with when you grab, or if you want to, you can, if they start realizing that, okay, you're going to start grabbing after you hit them with a 2A, then you can actually go from 2A into like 5A or 4A or something like that to mix it up. Um, but yeah, so basically the grab is actually a decent uh, alternative for the DP, uh, though you really have to commit to the... Um, to the skill uh if, oh, and one last I, thing about let me just mention if you're if you're thinking about picking up grab learn yomu in general first don't mm. you'll you'll need to you'll need to know a lot about yomu in general before picking up grab. yeah absolutely uh because you have to play around air speed and basic pressure um <clears throat> uh i honestly if it was for me uh we could go on forever about uh everything about this but we are on a timeline so i mean on time limit so let's see uh, insightful sword is basically a counter is there anything significant we can say about this outside of the fact that it does damage so there's there's certain scenarios where it's actually i would actually like it better than uh default hmm. Notably, um, in pressure, if they block a high J6A, usually in that scenario you have to gamble to avoid getting punished. But with counter, you can just immediately cancel the B-Bullets, land, and then counter, and usually it's pretty safe, and you mm. avoid getting punished for that. That's and really other, Yeah, and, and the other thing is, it's a bit better than DP against Hangekis, because one, not only if you get the read right, or you, you react, and you counter the Hangeki, you get way more damage, but if you, let's say, if you counter they didn't Hangeki, you're a lot less punishable. Also, it's pretty damn sick, so... Yep. It's <laughs> all It's all about being super, super cool while fighting. So, yeah, I think... It's a, yeah, it sounds like a decent option if you... I think it's a match, uh, match-up... Um, it depends on matchup, I think, it, because I think in some some cases it's not really a good idea to use insightful sword. I yeah, kind of see it like perfect made. When I was playing Saki, I just I just spam it, or I use it in random locations. It ended up working for me. <laughs> Maybe the same will happen here. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> nah. No, uh, mm. it's it's kind of like you got to realize how you need to bait people into actually attacking it or how to actually use it so that it makes things that you do safe and maybe you get some extra damage off of it. Mm. I know, I was mostly experimenting though. <laughs> Good idea though. Um, okay, what else do we have? Oh, actually, we can go pretty fast. We have... Okay, I would like, would like to talk about Reflector because it's not used as much as it should be. Like, it's a shield for bullets. It's pretty nice. It's an important default tool. Yeah. Again, Sakuya is pretty good, for example. L leveled, it's actually like really good. The extra bullets it sends off are actually pretty amazing. Especially if some character's bullets hit it at a certain angle, you'll send a huge barrage back. So uh, you, you basically are winning neutral back in an instant. It's pretty good. So usually when I run it, I don't really like leveling it all that much. I just like the utility of having basically having the option to um, not really move around much if there's a bullet that you can't really deal with coming at you. Um, that just gives you another option. And the other thing is it's nice in like long range neutral to have something pretty fast that you can jump out of when you cancel on your B-bullet landings. Hmm, yeah, that's, that's pretty good too. 
Yeah, if you can't, if you use it to cancel your bullets, a lot of people will try and wipe out your bullets as you throw them out. But if you use two, three, six, you know, the reflector, it'll, you know, it saves you a lot. It just use it after you use a bullet, and you'll save yourself a lot of time. And then we have what else? Uh, Lotus Stands Cut is actually a, a move I really enjoy. It's basically a really dense bullet, but even by being pretty damn dense, it's still kind of weak. Uh, so, you guys have any specific way you use this? Like, I don't, I don't think it's it's not actually that dense, is it? It's like only B two. I mean, B two and... is kind of dense, it's just not dense enough to deal with well, like a lot. Okay, so because the thing is, level three <laughs> rings are also B two. Like each ring is also B two. So yeah. It's not exactly particularly dense. The thing you do with it is it's slow and like stays out for a good amount of time, so you can use it as sort of bullet cover. Um, the only sort of issue is it's only ground usable, so it only covers like that area on the ground, which is honestly in law matchups not that useful. I'd rather have another two three six instead of this. Yeah, probably. It, well, I don't know. It's a, it's a very awkward skill with just even how it levels up. So it. Oh yeah. <laughs> like leveling it up is just it's such a weird thing because you don't know if you'll ever get the cards necessary to make it good at its levels. So it's either like you might just want to keep it at level one the entire time. Funny thing though, it actually gets worse at level two because um... God knows why it does less damage, does less spirit. The only thing is it gets denser. Yeah, it's, it, it, it gets it gets bigger too. Yeah, it just gets bigger, and that's that's about the biggest. You know, <laughs> you you want to get it to level four as soon as you get level two. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Usually, when I I play with Lotus Cut, I just do Lotus Cut J two A cancel Lotus Cut. It's pretty funny. <laughs> I, I don't know, I, I just like uh, having a neat bullet for once instead of just having, you know, the basic ones. It's also one of the prettiest bullets. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You shoot it with two swords, with both swords, so it's pretty damn nice. Uh, <laughs> what else do we have? Oh yeah, we, we remain with Earth Carving Cut. Oh boy, 214 alt. Earth Carving Cut is... Uh, it, it, Ideally, it should be um, a grace type move that you use to, you know, beat uh, other characters' bullets and get in. But it doesn't really do that because the grace, um, the grace active frames end before the move ends. So, okay, doesn't make sense. Yeah, it that skill. I said my piece on it earlier. It actually it has really high single damage hit, but. Beyond that one use, it's really awkward and it doesn't do the job that I feel like it was meant to originally do. Yes. That if if it uh, if it grazes from uh, start to end, then maybe it will be uh, good. But as it is, it's useful only in certain weather where you get uh, 3k mid screen. But that's it. Yeah, you can do it's some pretty... funny blue sky combos with it, but uh -huh. other than that, nothing really. Sadly. Still Both pretty... the other two on fours are generally better. Mm, yeah, slashing a flower up on one's head. Jesus Christ, this name. Um, this is probably the most usable uh, uh, alt of Yomo outside of uh, Phosphoric Slash. And it's basically uh, covers border escapes. You can do cross-ups. Um, the single hit damage is really high. I think it's probably one of the best alt Yomu has. Yeah, it's really good. I feel like I'd, I'd run this a lot more if it didn't mean um, I lost my uh, the standard mid-screen bread and butter mm -hmm. without Reko. Well, you can still, you can you get another you know B and B. You can. You can 6A at the end instead and use the, that instead and it'll mm. bring you right next to the corner where they are. Well, that's uh, near corner though. 
Dart yeah. is basically yeah. mid-screen, but it doesn't work if you are full screen, like one corner to the corner, to the other corner, you can do anything. But if you are like mid-screen or a bit outside of the other corner, you can do it. The stage in Soku isn't really that big, so saying near corner is basically saying mid-screen almost. It's kind of strange. I don't know, 6-8 knocks them pretty far. As long as you're within, you know, B range, then mm -hmm. you're, you're good to go. Yeah, and it's just because it's more reliable in combos, I think. But this is also is a lot more reliable, in my opinion, for your pressure. It just makes stuff safer. Um, and if you catch them pressing buttons or jumping with it, um, it counter hits and you get a lot of damage. The damage is really uh, disgusting in that case. <laughs> Uh, so we remain with the 2 to 2 b which is Wicked Soul and Strange Half Body. Uh, Wicked Soul is basically uh, some sort of expansion of 5C and 2C, in a way. Just a lot better. It felt uh, really strong when I used it last, uh, in the set with, uh, just it's, now. It's pretty decent, yeah. It, it covers a very good area and it because of all the waves it actually clears you know many bullets it's it's great cover it you know the main downside being you know it it makes yomu or not yomu Myon, you know out of commission for a while that's the problem with that's the main problem with both of the alt uh, tutus but... how dense is it that it can cause bullets to disappear i thought it wasn't but... dense at all so it's so yeah, so yeah this bullet is pretty good in neutral but like it like i said it's pretty dense it's b1 times five so they can use it in certain matches to clear their neutral bullets that they set up mm. it also you know people who like to go have high above you and try and come down on you from above it prevents them from doing that oh it's an actual anti-air for once but, <laughs> yeah but why do i not see many you must use it i'm pretty sure i've never seen that one used before um, like, do the people <coughs> prefer the default one or the other alternative skill? Uh, the Alt 2 2, uh, the Alt 2 2 are all really good for the most part, but uh, you're basically ex exchanging your snipe tool that also breaks through uh, other opponents' bullets. So it's a really tough change. Uh, change. I mean, the other thing is. You don't need any deck space to run default. You don't need a level at all. It just does its job at level zero. Mm -hmm. But with the alts, you kind of have to run a good number of them to make really make them work, and also to make sure you actually draw them. Uh, yeah, because both skills uh, get better each level. They never stop getting better uh, every time you level them. Uh, Weak Soul gets bigger and bigger each time you level, and Strange Art Body gets, uh, I think... Uh, more bullets and also it gets, density. Yeah, it gets more bullets and then it, it gets bigger and denser. Okay. Um, okay, so... <laughs> man, I hate, uh, I hate to do this, but we, we are basically in... We have 30 minutes, so I think we, we move on really fast uh, towards spell cards and then we close everything out is that fine for you guys i understand <laughs> for, for the spell cards i would like to ask what um, what's the difference between the two and five card clones and is it worth to actually run the five card clones so uh, you go ahead <laughs> okay thanks um so the five card clones of course lasts for 10 seconds while the two card only lasts for four um, which also means towards the later half of the clone duration for the five cards, you actually build meter again while clones are active, which is kind of big. And the other thing is five card clone activation is seven frames faster than the two card, which is actually quite significant. It gives you way more setups into it. It gives you way more combos that you can do into it. It also catches people mashing but after clones. If they block, mm. a lot of people will mash after clones because they know, you know clones are generally not safe, but you can catch a lot of people doing that. Mm, I think... Was enough uh, to mash clones? I don't think uh, any of us understood what you just said. <laughs> 
Never mind. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think the gen is kicking in. Yeah, um, the, the thing here is that I think like 90%, no wait, uh, like 80% of Yomu uh, spell cards are used. And I think people know what they they do. The only uh, spell cards that you see almost ever are Thousand Cherry Blossoms and Sword of Cycles. And sometimes Six Root Cleansing, but that is still used for memes and stuff. So I guess the only thing we have to do is just run uh, through those two. So Thousand Cherry Blossom is kind of uh, neutral. Neutral card, kind of. It's the it's the most anime looking <laughs> skill in this game. Okay, yeah, okay, definitely. Yes, uh, sorry. <laughs> A thousand uh, cherry blossoms. It, uh, it ideally Which it would be mistake. really good, but it doesn't do what it should be doing, so it's kind of useless at times. It, it just takes too long to actually do anything. Yeah. It, you can't really set up into it very well. The spell flash is awkward and doesn't let you get what you need out. It, it You just don't have the tool to make the best use of it. For what it's worth, it's quite safe as a card. You can use it to get out of sticky situations a lot of times. Like whenever you're to avoid getting punished, um, say like if they blocked the last record hit, you can just cancel into it and pretty much be safe. Three card for a yeah. It's uh, the cost doesn't quite justify, but it's it's what it is. I mean, at least you are safe and you can go back to neutral. Uh, it, potentially, it can crush and do really big damage in the corner, but uh, unless the opponent uh, isn't respecting your uh, option, it's not going to do much. Yeah, there's a crush setup with 2C with it. If you get him to block a 2C in the corner and you do it immediately, yeah. it'll usually crush and do a good amount of damage, but there are a lot of ways to escape that. Yeah, Neven is just saying that this spell card is pretty much just a mix up to make people confuse its SOE. <laughs> Why people don't watch the opponent cards, damn it? I mean, even if you if you quick switch it, they might not realize it. Oh wow, the the, the tech. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't you don't block anything during the run past, so it's pretty obvious what it is most of the time. Oh yeah, you can just uh, what if run it's around the graze. What if it's mountain vapor, and I was expecting slash of eternity? Oh, that's thing. <laughs> I like now. Then I'm fucked. <laughs> I, well, there's there's still a visual cue. There's a lot of you know pink coming from where Yo oh, yes. goes across, but you know they, 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 it could still work. Implying oh. I look at these things. Oh man, good old <laughs> lack of attention. And sort of cycles is reversal. <laughs> that, that's it. it yeah, it's it's all bad. right. Don't run it. <laughs> it. I think I think it's all right. It's actually a little bit fast. I think it's like one frame faster than the other reversal. That it's a melee, so. But you know, unlike the other reversal, regardless if it's blocked or not, you're not safe. The only yeah. it's worse in terms. Of, at least if they block the other reversal, yeah. then you know the other reversal just has more utility. So I have like two problems with this card. One is I don't know the frame data quite well enough, but I don't think it's like full invincibility for its, it's startup. It's not. It yeah, it's only uh, get hit out of it on startup. Yeah. You can get hit by bullets, which, for what it is, it's just a super version of 623C, so I don't know why it doesn't graze. <laughs> yeah, and the other thing is, it just generally just has way less utility than, than the other four card reversal. Like, the four card reversal, honestly, I use it more often on offense instead of on defense. It actually gives you a couple of options in pressure. You can do, like, Crush, str crush strings with it, although green sword is arguably better for that. And you can sort of use it to scare the opponent into not wanting to like use Hengeki because usually it's pretty reactable and you just pop the card and they take 4k. Um, the only good thing is that uh, 
I mean, theoretically, but it doesn't happen. Uh, it will be a good ender for uh, bullet uh, bullet combos, but those are super specific, and the damage is barely better than any other ender. So I don't like to say this, but sort of cycle is kind of really bottom of the barrel as far as Yomu spells go. Sadly. Um, so, um, at this point, do we have anything else left to, to say, or...? No shit about still... any of his spells? Uh, no, I mean, I'm talking in general, because I'm constantly looking at the time, so... I, I can't think of anything, like, specific to mention. Like, all of it's mostly been covered. In a general sense. I mean, yeah. yeah. I guess we can wrap it up. So at the end, we usually have our Oof. questions and answer section. So yeah, if the viewers want to ask us or the guests something, go ahead. <laughs> Meanwhile, I, want, I would like to ask you, Wayward and P4, did you enjoy being part of the podcast? Did you think you were too quiet? Did you think you talked too much? I don't know, anything goes. <laughs> Like, well, what did you expect? What did you get? Was it fine? Was it not fine? Could we improve on something? It, it's about what I expected. You're, you're all a bunch of fools. <laughs> <laughs> I, I oh, did. Yeah. We did it! <laughs> Good job, team. We did, we, did, we did it, boys! The eighth strike in a row, yeah. <laughs> um, any, anything else? <laughs> No, I, I think that pretty much covers it. <laughs> but, uh, I think it was fun. Are, are you guys going to participate in the civil war that's going to happen, like, right now? Why would I support those two scrubs? <laughs> <laughs> mm, I thought that one! Hot fire! Uh, we got shit! Uh, uh, well, I, I see all the normies are voting for Blaze Dragon, like... I might as well just join Iron just for that reason. Um, I guess we can go on to the questions and we answer. I think today we didn't have many people watching. Uh, I was checking the numbers. Oh well, um, so okay. Any questions from the people? You guys want to know anything about Wayward, P4, or whatever? Just write something. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. Irish Irish demands explanation. Why why do you guys use the names that you use? <laughs> because I needed something. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, I I I had a I had another name that I went by for a very long time, and then I realized. This is even worse than what I currently have, so I, I switched it. <laughs> yeah, I got a question for Wayward. Uh, what is it like being in the Wayward Zone? You invented it. No. <laughs> uh, I, it it's very lonely. <laughs> man, Aww. all right, you guys, <laughs> you, need, you need to start joining this man's host. He does it for you. <laughs> you gotta start doing it, man. <laughs> I don't join more, but I know you don't like mirrors. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I don't mirrors. like mirrors sometimes. Sometimes. Oh man. You, you're better than me. I I hate don't like. Oh man. All right, we got a question from Lion. Like good old Lionheart. He says, "How do I make Yomo eat enough vegetables? Get big enough uh, for my pressure to matter?" <laughs> what? I mean, her uh, swords cut anything, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> cut your vegetable with your swords, boy. Uh, uh, let's see. Like, we we have again. That Yobu main main pair oh. some personality aspects. Mm, I, I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't even remember most Yobu mains. <laughs> you have got three right in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd say two, because I don't ever see Genki play. <laughs> That's true. That's true. True things, man. 
that's some real shit going on. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I mean, I know you won't fight me because you know you don't like mirrors, so. <laughs> I would I would say that all Yomus are D6 heroes, but for uh, if I play with Wayward or Genki, that doesn't uh, that isn't true. And I don't know if we have ever played before. I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, let's see... Okay, so, so, uh, I don't know who asked it, but somebody thought P4 was Apache main. Um, is that, <laughs> is that, like, relevant? I have never played Apache in my life, so... I don't know <laughs> yes, where it's very wow. relevant then. Um, there is Neatin that is asking about, um... Outside of Grab, do you guys have any idea on new cards or tech that might significantly change either of Yomu plays or Aoshi's view on the power scale? Hmm. I mean, you can make her worse, but I don't think there's anything... <laughs> uh, yeah, personally, I don't think there is anything too complex going on behind the scene of Alts and whatever. I guess... Angeki system is pretty fun and you can do stuff with it, but as far as Yumu herself, the tech is kind of there, for the most part, unless I'm missing something. Which I may perfectly be. Uh, let's see... Uh, Gutman asks, how did you two discover Toho in general? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. yo. <laughs> I saw a picture, and I was like, I wonder what that is. And I was like, oh, it's a, it's a shoot 'em up And then I ignored it for like, you know, seven months. And then I saw another thing. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try it. <laughs> and, and, then I, and then I did. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. Wow, you guys... <laughs> you didn't go on an extravagant adventure. <laughs> I mean, I could make I could make shit up if you want, but give me your yeah, give me that story. I, I'll I'll take the made up version. Well, I was wandering the jungle one day, and all of a sudden there was a computer sitting there, and there I saw a Yomu on the front of you know. What, was she cute? Perfect cherry boss. It was the it was the board side was it? <laughs> yes, it was it was it was you know it was N hentai. It was sad panda. It was multiple things. It was like seven tabs open. <laughs> That's a great anecdote. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great story. <laughs> oh man. Wow, my uh, story is... He joined Soku because of porn. That's perfect. Yo, my hey, story yeah. is trash compared to his story. I, I, I would like to say that I'm pretty sure there are people that know Toho only because of the porn. I would like to say that. And before those people are our top players? <laughs> I won't be surprised. <laughs> uh, oh, so that just reminds me. I wanted to ask before and Weyra, do you guys play other fighting games or is Soku the only one for you? I play many. Oh. Give us examples of what you play. I am currently playing Guilty Gear Revelator. Mm. I would play others. I I can't remember. I have Blaze Blue, the central fiction. Uh, I used to play a lot of Tekken. I haven't picked up Tekken 7 yet, but I, I'm thinking about it. Nice. I mean, many people here played also uh, uh, those games, so you might record as them or play them then in the near future. <laughs> I hope I just don't confuse the voices, but you four, how about you? Oh. Um, yes. So Soku is yes. either my only fighting game I really play, or I play two of them, um, depending entirely on whether or not you think Smash Bros. is a fighting game. <laughs> Why not? Sure. Fine, buddy. But yeah, I play some melee on the side, or I used to play a lot of melee, rather, but... Due to uh, complications, I'd sort of drop that. Uh, we have a question from Nivenfall. He asks, How do I get a cool voice like yours, Wayward? <laughs> I didn't know it was cool. <laughs> it's you put on the mask. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> no one cared about this Wayward until he was in the Wayward Zone. 
But by then, he I, was I just a yellow main. <laughs> I, I know the perfect training in the even fall. You just have to host 100 minutes a day without somebody joining. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> um, right, I will stop then. Okay, so is there anything uh, else from the guests, from the hosts, from the viewers? Because we might as well wrap it up at that point because, you know, Civil War is starting in, what, 10 minutes? 15 yeah, minutes? Yeah, I still yeah. got videos. This series is also... Just put them on. This year is also here to remind us of the impending doom. So, what question was it again, Tessir? Or let me, uh, which two would you fuck? Yeah, <laughs> the classic. Which two who would you fuck? Which one? Seat. Which one can I say with that won't get me thrown in jail? Um, mm, I mean, might, just don't say something like Tevi or Suika because that's jailbait as fuck. <laughs> Don't say Suika, don't say Romelia, uh, Sondre, and I think you're fine. But dude, she's Chirno. You, 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 just, you just said Romelia, but look at this video, Romelia is actually a, a taller than Yomu. Yomu is just short, man. <laughs> well, and Romelia could be just old, I mean, she's, she's a vampire. No, it will make this too complicated, okay? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, I, think uh, we, I think we should stop before this goes too far. <laughs> Some lines shouldn't be crossed unless you're on zero. I, I, I think I think the police is already coming. Oh no. <laughs> okay, um so I already heard the sirens before more than I should. <laughs> I guess yeah. nothing I, mean, I think we are we went over everything and we only uh, we only have the the shield part, so zero please. Shield us for uh, for us. But I still have videos. Damn you, Tessiro. Yeah, while well, you have the videos, uh, <laughs> I know I asked way more than before, did you enjoy this? Oh, I yes. just completely forgot about it, yeah. Good, that's <laughs> glad. I'm glad to hear that because, you know, sometimes people might not like talking a lot or they might have expected something else. You call this, uh, you call this all fools, which is true. I mean, you've seen our preparation. <laughs> what preparation? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> But if you enjoyed yourself, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah thanks for having us. I mean, if you're interested in later podcasts, after we're done with the deck character discussions, we are always open for topic ideas, more guests, I don't know. Anything, we might really. see you again. Depends on how long we want to, ha uh, to, to have this podcast last. Wow, right now, we're committed to uh, have them at least last until we went for every single character in the game. Okay, so, uh, Zero, can you... You, you alive? Then eat us with your best shielding, and we can close it out. Oh, yes. <laughs> All the videos. Is this what you wanted to? Did, did you just want to close up with this video? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> that's perfect to stop. To stop this. I had to do Time it. Time to stop. Okay. Uh, as far as anything else goes, for, in terms of Hisotan related, if for some reason you are not part of uh, Hisotan server already, there is a link to the Discord down below on my channel. Um, if you're looking for any more Hisotan content, you could probably check out any of our YouTube channels. So there's Tessiro, you got me, Zero Fuse, you got Lionheart, you got all sorts of people. Um, if you're looking for more uh, gameplay related things, you want to get involved a little bit, we have uh, Dream Chasers for new players coming up next Friday. Should be on the 5th? Let me just check. Fourth. Nope, it'll, it'll be on August 4th. Uh, in about like 10 minutes, we have Blaze Dragon vs. Iraq, the team tourney. This is the preliminary stage, so it's for qualifiers only. Um, but once we have that, you know, we'll have our we'll have our team brackets, and then we'll actually get those team tourneys going. Uh, as far as anything else goes, I'd like to give shout outs to uh, what was it? It was shout outs to Toho Not Sweden, Sweden. Toho Sweden, because they allowed me to um, post some of their content, uh, talk about what happened at Narcon, and I don't know, just a bunch of cool dudes doing cool stuff. If we show up at Narcon more, you know, we get to play some more Silk with them. And they, they also have a sponsor. They're sponsored by uh, Anna Merch, AnnaMerch.com, I think, where they sell all sorts of, you know, anime-related things. And it's just, it's, and they sponsored all the prizes there. Uh, we don't have anything like that yet, but we'll get to there. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just about it. 
We shall ask them to uh, to give us the the sponsor on the Discord. Make it official. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Uh, you know what? That's that's Zaytan's call. Zaytan, you know what, Zaytan? You know what you should do? You should go and get Discord Nitro just for this server. Because you know what? We have one thousand five hundred members, and you can do it. <laughs> Real. All right, but that's gonna wrap it up. We gotta get out of here. Uh, let's get that tourney started. Go ahead and uh, say peace out, guys. Thank you again for listening to us, and a special and big thanks to our guests for taking the time to participate in this. Thank yes, you, was Thank you, Good Goodbye, everyone. It was pretty fun. So yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for Thank having me. Okay, yeah, so. so Thank bye -bye. you. I, I, I just sat here and talked for like three hours.